I'd like to call this meeting to order. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Radnor Township School District, Tuesday, June 29th, 2021, regular business meeting. It is lovely to see everyone in person. Uh, we met in person last week as well, but this is our first regular business meeting, and we are happy to see all of your faces. I'd like to report that the board met in executive session on the following dates. June 1st, to discuss personnel. June 8th, to discuss personnel. June 11th, to discuss legal matters. June 15th, to discuss personnel. June 22nd, to discuss legal and personnel matters. June 28th, to discuss legal and personnel matters. And this evening, June 29th, to discuss legal, safety, and personnel matters. And with that, we will get underway with our report from students. We'd like to welcome both of you tonight. Hello, hello. It's been a while. Um, I'm very excited to be here, and it's crazy to think that this is <laughs> a little distracting, but it's crazy to think that it's been om actually more than a year since we've seen each other in person. Now, I have seen Mr. Bachelor in the hallways, and I saw Mr. Moore the other day. And remind me if I'm forgetting anyone, but it's just been a crazy year. As Radnor wrapped up our last, ooh, this is loud. <laughs> As Radnor wrapped up our school year last Tuesday, we remembered the historical year behind us. From all virtual learning, where days were long and monotonous, to hybrid learning, where we only saw a few classmates of whom we built strong friendships with. And then as of March to a week ago, in-person learning, where Radnor began to feel normal and like home again. Throughout the year, we as a student body have persevered and made the most of every occasion. We even made new ones to compensate for those lost through the pandemic, like the sophomores movie night and the revived senior carnival. This year also produced an abundance of creativity, like the literal art projects of AP art students propped up in, propped up in the lobby last week, but also amazing skills, like different ways to communicate, different ways to see people, and a new way of learning, all while staying safe thanks to our amazing staff. As for the month of June, three weeks zoomed by us as students prepared for summer. On the first weekend of June, there was a senior carnival. Seniors gathered in the at the junior on the junior parking lot once again to celebrate their post-prom festivities, accompanied by a rock climbing wall, a Velcro wall at which they could jump and stick to, a hang glider cars carousel, a Gravitron, an aggressive bull ride, fun arcade games, a fun slide, ice cream truck, and a picture memory wall. The seniors had a memorable night that will go down in history. On the following weekend, the juniors attended their junior prom. Although technically called a Starry Night Junior Social, the juniors capped off their year in suits, ties, and dresses while having a blast on the dance floor. For those whose scene wasn't the rowdy crowd or those who needed a break, there was plentiful snacks, seating, and cornhole for them to play. After the event, numerous groups ventured to our neighborly Manila's before heading home. Earlier that same day, both our girls and the boys lacrosse teams brought home the PIAA state championships for the first time in Radnor history. Congratulations to them. The teams ruled the field with a score of 10 to 2 for the boys, please correct me if I'm wrong, and 11 to 5 for the girls. Which brings me to the third week of June. On the 16th, our seniors graduated. I won't go too into depth because I know you were there and I might tear up, but the ceremony was beautiful, beautifully orchestrated with meaningful and symbolic speeches. As always, the seniors flaunted their cigars as they took to Instagram with pictures of their achievement. And as you might know, the proud champions previously mentioned received their diplomas wearing their shining medals. Thank you for an amazing year and have a great summer. Thank you. Welcome, Sammy. Thank you, Austin, and good evening, everyone. It feels great to know that we made it to the other side of such a challenging year, and I think that this summer is especially well-deserved. Per usual, Radnor High School students finished off the year with plenty of action and excitement. Even with only three weeks left in the school year, Mr. Dietzler and his students managed to pull off a production of the beloved improv show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Tryouts were held Friday, May 29th, and the rehearsals took place after school the same week of their performance, beginning on June 5th. After only four rehearsals, the cast and crew were well prepared for the big event on Friday, June 11th. Com 
Compared to the past years where the show would run three times, this year featured one performance which took place at 7.30 in the RHS cafeteria. As improv usually does involve unexpected occurrences, the cafeteria provided a fun new space to watch the show compared to the usual performance that takes place in the theater. There were five different improv teams, including the whistleblowers, the mighty blue kazoos, the freshman daycare, and the backyardigans. Throughout the performance, the cast played different games such as Call Bob, Newsroom, and Dinner Party, all of which had the whole audience laughing. This show was one of the first live theater performances for an in-person audience at RHS in over a year, which brought with it a special enthusiasm and spirit for the occasion. On the first Saturday in June, the Second Set of Hands Club organized a food drive, which took place at Radnor Middle School from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The club partnered with Mainline Health, and all of the food collected at the event was given to oncology patients in the area. Thanks to the support from the Radnor community, Second Set of Hands filled nearly 50 canvas bags with food. On Friday, June 11th, the Black Student Union led a powerful student walkout at, the Radnor, at Radnor High School. At 9.15, students left class and gathered in the, Radnor, in, in the high school's cafeteria court ride, courtyard. There, there, four members of the BSU shared personal stories about experiencing racism at Radnor schools, spread awareness of the lack of teachers of color in Radnor, and called for a curriculum that includes more black history. Overall, the walkout was well organized and an important step in increasing awareness about the need for diversity in our district. The members of the 2021 senior class have so many talents, which made watching this year's baccalaureate on Sunday, June 13th, a lot of fun. The all virtual event premiered at 6 p.m. on YouTube. The video, which was available for everyone to watch at no cost, contained a collection of performances, including musical pieces and inspiring messages. As we finish up this year, I know that all of us students are so grateful for the support and hard work of our teachers, the administration, and the school board. Despite all of the craziness, we are still able to have so many amazing events, and we continue to learn in the best ways possible, whether over Zoom, hybrid, or in person. Mass spaces and space seating didn't stop us Rounder students from showing up with high spirits, making lasting friendships, and learning so many important things. I hope everyone has a very relaxing and enjoyable summer, and we'll see you next September. Thank you very much. And now we'll have our report from our superintendent, Dr. Batchelor. I do want to mention, uh, Ms. Solomon is unable to attend tonight's meeting. She did uh, let me know that. Thank you, Mr. I mean, Dr. Batchelor. Thank you. Welcome. It's good to see everyone. Uh, and thank you, Sammy and Austin, for your comments. Uh, so I have a little clip I just want to share before I get into the uh, superintendent's remarks that really, I think, represents uh, you know, how I feel now that this year is over uh, and uh, what it has taken. I, 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 boy, I could really have some fun with that, how I feel right now. Um, I know this has been a challenging year for everyone, uh, and uh, this has been a year that we have come together as a school district, as a community. Uh, but this clip just shares uh, a lot of how I was feeling, and then I'll share with you a little bit more about the clip. I was uh, serving lunch, some of the students remember, in uh, early June. Uh, Russell, where's Russell? Is he still here? Russell, Russell won one of the uh, half-day golden tickets and had me serving, uh, filling in for him for a half-day. Uh, actually, it was the Friday before Memorial Day weekend, now that I remember it. Uh, and, uh, and, and one of the students, uh, Coop, Cooper Roy, came up to me and said, Dr. Batchelor, you got to see this video. I got to share this with you. And this video, though, summarizes how I feel right now. So I want to share this video for a moment. And it's one of our player managers of the baseball team was asked to uh, pinch run uh, in a game. The player manager, Coop, was asked to pinch run from third. And right away, the person who went up, the Radner athlete who went up to bat, uh, hit him home right away. So I feel like we've all been waiting to get to the end of this school year uh, and all been waiting for that moment. And Coop was so proud. And I know Coop watches the meetings. And he didn't. He kind of challenged me. He said, you got to share this, Dr. Batchelor. Um, but we're all happy to have finally been hit home. Uh, and, and for a guy who grew up playing lacrosse and we're honoring lacrosse tonight, it takes a lot for me to acknowledge baseball So uh, um, and, uh, and coaching lacrosse. But, uh, uh, we all made it. We made it home. We made it to the end of the school year. It's been a challenging year, but we made it. So let me move on with the report. 
So each month uh, this school year, everyone is familiar, those of you who have been watching board meetings, those of you who haven't been watching board meetings, you, you're, you're a smart person for, for avoiding some of the, the long meetings. But at the same time, each month we share our data and we've shared our statistics on where we are as a school district um, based on COVID. And we are just so pleased to see uh, where this trend has gone, especially in the last few weeks, having uh, several weeks in a row where we actually had no cases. Uh, but as we look at this trend and how we responded to this trend throughout the year as a district, as a community, um, you know, again, now that we're safely hit home, I feel comfortable saying uh, that we handled things well. Uh, moving on to the next, there's our positive case counts that we have been sharing each month as we've moved forward. And again, very pleased to see if you look really closely, you need your reader, I need my readers to be able to, but that's far away from me. Um, but you can see that there's nothing there for the last three weeks, which is really positive uh, as we move forward into the summer. Looking back at what has been a historic year, and Austin and Sammy and others have talked about it, and we sent out a video uh, back in March to talk about everything that we've been through, and one of our focuses as a school district, it's not just about getting back to normal, it's a better normal, and how do we continue to move forward? But this uh, two slides here show just the history, and we had three school openings this year. We had three school openings. We started the school virtually. It was a challenge. It was something that we all had hoped we wouldn't have to do virtually. But right away, two weeks after starting the year virtually, our school board met two weeks after that uh, and came together. And we decided to make the decision to bring kids in in hybrid. Um, our hybrid program was a very strong program. It wasn't ideal, but it was a program that we knew we could get our kids in and we could do it safely. Um, our staff rallied. Uh, around making it happen, everyone in this district. Uh, and then we also had another start to the school year when we shifted again. Uh, we shifted again um, from that hybrid to full in-person, first beginning uh, in February with our elementary program uh, and then shifting with our middle school and high school. So there is a lot that has happened this year and it is thanks to, I've said it so many times, but I feel like I can't say it enough, it's thanks to the hard work of all of our staff, everyone, and we're recognizing some of our retirees tonight it was the roles everyone played in this district to make things happen. Uh, the, our parents, the support that our parents, our parents became, and I know in my household it was a challenging year with my kids home. Our parents became uh, teachers, became the, the, the support line, depending the age of the students for us, and, and the support from our parents and our students. Our students were simply amazing. If a year and a half ago somebody had told me we were gonna mask all the students and we were gonna be socially distanced, and I can tell you what I said a year and a half ago when those things came up, I, I, I questioned whether it was possible. It was our students who handled it so well and were absolutely amazing. So there's a little look back at historic year, those couple of slides, moving on to the next slide. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, that's good, keep going. There's. You can look back at the presentation, keep going next one. Tonight we're always, we have some other good news to share and there's always good news shares and there's just an abundance of good news here um, in Radnor. And I'll give a moment for the slide. Oh, thanks Michael. <laughs> it's all right. Um, we want to recognize our student board. Uh, tonight we have a lot of recognitions. First we're going to have our, we'll be recognizing our student board. Oh, let me jump back, sorry. Thank you Michael. Always good news to share. <laughs> <laughs> you worked when he was there. Get out of here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Always good news to share just the, the accomplishments of our kids and our community is even in, in this year that was so challenging, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it is pretty amazing when we look at the accomplishments that we see here listed um, from rankings for our school district uh, to the individual achievements of our students. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. So we are just grateful and proud. Next slide, we're recognizing tonight, in a little bit, we'll be recognizing our retiring student representatives to the school board. And so we wanna congratulate them for their service, especially their service. I have kidded school board members that a year of COVID is actually like five years. So you've actually served about five years uh, on the school board. So I think that would, that would go well with the student reps as well. You can put on your resumes. It was, a little, it was like a year plus. Uh, and then we also will be, next slide, We'll be recognizing in a moment uh, our boys and girls lacrosse, um, and we have board members who will speak to that resolution. I just wanted to speak to a moment too that uh, 
first of all, just the, uh, the incredible uh, hard work that goes into a state championship, uh, the years, the dedication, the commitment. Uh, you represented Radnor well, both the girls and boys teams. Um, and all of the work that you do behind the scenes and all those years to have that all come together. Uh, and what was really amazing to me that day, and I get a little, you know, being on the sideline, I was excited for your win, but when individual players walked over to me and said, Mr. Bachelor, thanks for helping to make this season happen, that blew me away. Um, so not only are they talented and great athletes and unbelievable, but I think we also have the nicest group of kids. Uh, and, and that goes to our student section as well, with a little help of Coach Ryan adjusting some of the cheers. But uh, uh, our student section was there cheering and cheering uh, respectfully and really supporting our team. Uh, it was really, it was a history making day to have both the girls and boys on the same day win the state championship on the same field. It was wonderful. So we'll be recognizing them, them in a moment tonight. Uh, and then we'll be recognizing as well, uh, we'll be recognizing our retirees. Uh, so we're recognizing our retirees. Tonight, 446 years of combined service. Uh, some of them couldn't make it tonight just based on the schedule and summer schedules. Uh, we're thrilled to have some of them here with us tonight uh, so that we can recognize them and thank them for the just incredible and astounding impact you have had on the lives of so many students here on Radnor. And we are so appreciative of the impact that you've had on our students' lives. And then is the and that concludes uh, Superintendent's remarks. Thank you, Dr. Batchelor. Okay, we're going to get right underway with our recognitions. And starting off, we have our resolution honoring retiring re employees. And I will turn this back over to Dr. Batchelor, but let me first read the recommended action. <clears throat> uh, actually, is it an action? Is that the board adopts the following resolution upon the retirement of the listed retirees after the listed number of years of service a faithful service to the Radnor Township School District and to the children of the community. The, school, the Board of School Directors hereby records its sincere appreciation and unreserved commendation for these years of diligent devotion to professional responsibilities. In public recognition of this service, this citation is presented by unanimous vote of the Board of School Directors at its meeting on June 29, 2021, and it is recorded in the proceedings of the meeting. And at this time, I would entertain a motion and a second. A motion from Ms. Dunn and a second from Ms. Goldman. All those in favor? And the motion passes unanimously, eight to zero. I will now turn this over to Dr. Batchelor, and I think you'll have your administrators do the individual honorees. Yes, I'll turn it over to Mr. Stitzel. So good evening, everyone. It, it is a sad time of the year because we are not going to see some of our faces of our staff anymore. But it's an exciting time of the year because every time I see a retiree, they always have this huge smile on their face. Uh, so it's always exciting when I get to see them again and talk to them. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at Wayne Elementary and recognize those retirees. Then we'll transfer over to Ithan Elementary. We'll then transfer to Radnor Elementary. We'll go to the Radnor Middle School. And then we'll hit transportation and ending with John Hearn. So without further ado, Principal Ferguson. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Stetzel. I'm standing here because we just don't know, we don't want our back to anyone, and we really want to highlight um, our retirees. At this time, I'm Nancy Ferguson. I have the privilege of being at Wayne Elementary. Thank you. And I just want to echo what Dr. Batchelor and the board have said, well, what a year. Um, everyone came together, but the people that made the most difference, in my opinion, were our teachers. So um, without further ado, Susie, would you come up? And Beth, I'm not sure she's supposed to be here, but there was an issue. Beth Stackhouse. Okay, well, I have her things. So <laughs> this is Mrs. Susie Ritz and McGillivray. Susie and I have been together eight years, I think. I think eight years. Um, and what, what I tried to think about was everything I wanted to say in a short amount of time. So I apologize. The first, I know, the, good luck. The first word that comes to mind is dedicated. Um, Susie is a person that doesn't count time. She's there mornings, afternoons, evenings. You know, hey, I had this great idea. She is dedicated not only to the students, but to her colleagues. Huge advocate for your colleagues as well. Um, but I would say her particular love is those kids that are at risk for a multitude of reasons, whether it's academically, socially, whatever and Susie goes above and beyond 
for anyone. So that is the first thing I needed to say to you. Um, when I first was hired in Radnor, one of the things I got to speak to you about was down at the, um, the museum for, um, help me, uh, the, she was honored for helping a student and a family that had gone through tragedy, and you can find her on a wall in a museum in Philadelphia, so that's your scavenger hunt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The Teaching Tolerance Museum, yes. I believe, yes. Um, Susie started her career, I believe, as a special education teacher, um, but then has been at Wayne as a second grade and third grade teacher since I have known her. But beyond that, when you talk about service and you talk about advocacy, Susie's one of the teachers that started um, our after-school program, first starting at Highland Avenue and then partnering with St. David's. Um, she's still working on that. Uh, I got an email, I think, last week. Okay, I know I'm going, but how is this going to look? Um, so she rallied a bunch of our teachers as well as community members and, and, and uh, the district to make sure that our kids get what they need. Um, it's never going to end. We've got it, I promise. <laughs> um, Finally, the love of students. Um, again, examples. Every year around the holidays, it's, okay, we're going to do this party for the kiddos, and what are you going to donate, and how can you be there? But beyond that, it's connecting the community and the class and, uh, and our um, school events with the PTO. She always had ways to scaffold it so that kids could stay after school, maybe have some pizza and attend the event if they didn't necessarily have rides or didn't have costumes or felt the need to to support that. Um, so clearly, I think what you're getting is that she's dedicated, she's an advocate, her love of students, and that your service has been amazing. And we thank you for your service to the students, community, our staff. You will be missed, but honestly, I'm so happy for your next chapter for you. <laughs> so thank you very much. I'm handing this over to Dr. Boylan. Hi. You came back from vacation. Service. I did. So hello, everyone. I'm Tranya Boylan, principal of Ethan Elementary. And I echo what Dr. Bachelor said. This was a year. Boy, was it a year. But here we are. And um, I did come back from vacation because I really wanted to honor our nurse, Nurse Kathy. Nurse Sobo, come on up. So Kathy was new to school nursing when she joined us at Ethan Elementary about eight years ago, but you would not know that by how things operated in the health suite. You don't realize the number of things that an elementary school nurse does every day. Parents, you only hear part of it. Teachers only hear part of it. The nurse hears everything. So Kathy handled every single situation with a calm confidence and a caring. And boy, have we had some times where We've called 911. We've, we've called the bus driver. We've called the parents. We've called the parents when they were overseas. We called the neighbor. But we always knew that our children were taken care of because they were always in good hands with Kathy. And that was before March, about a year and a half ago. So we thought our nurses were busy. And then the pandemic hit. And we were busier than busy. And when people talk about essential personnel, I don't think they think about our school nurses, but Kathy was the most essential person in our building. Whether it was a child, a staff member, a parent, a community member, everyone who was touched in one way or another by COVID went through this person. So I might have an important job as the principal, but when a pandemic hits, you want a top-notch school nurse, and we were very lucky to have one. So it has been a pleasure working with Kathy, and I know our Ithan families who have worked with her, our nurses in the school district who have gotten to know Kathy, and they really came together this year. So Kathy, I thank you for your service. I appreciate your friendship. And most of all, I wish you a happy, restful retirement. Congratulations. And I'm going to hand it over to Heather Esposito from Radnor Elementary. Good evening. I am Heather Esposito. I am the assistant principal at Radnor Elementary and also Ithan Elementary. This evening, representing Radnor Elementary, I'd like to recognize Marie Bear, and I'd also like to recognize John Rossi, please. Yeah, please come on up. 
I will start first talking about Marie Bear. Marie has been a dedicated employee of Radnor Township School District for over 35 years. She started her career at Ethan Elementary School as a paraprofessional, but quickly got gobbled up as a full-time contracted teacher. We eventually took her over to Radnor Elementary School, and she has served in a variety of capacities at Radnor Elementary School. Most importantly, she's been a second grade teacher, but outside of the classroom, she's taken on additional responsibilities in her ELL summer literacy camp, as well as also as a grade level department chair. What Marie Bear is mostly known for, and you can ask the parents and the students who have been privileged enough to have her as their second grade teacher, is that she is known for meeting the needs of her students wherever they are. She has high expectations in the classroom and she demands excellence of her students. She demands excellence of herself. Whoever comes to fill her shoes will have very big shoes to fill because Marie always worked tirelessly for the students inside her classroom and out. Beyond teaching, I would say the only other thing that brings the greatest pleasure to Marie, I would say, is her family naming her grandson, Sean. And so I'm hoping for her in retirement that she'll be able to spend many, many moments with him, enjoying time with him, and not having to worry so much about grading papers and those high expectations for her students, but the high expectations for your time with your family. Congratulations. And now the gentleman to my side here is John Rossi, who has spent over 19 years in Radnor Township School District. He started first as a courier for the school district and then moved on to being our maintenance person for the last 10 plus years at Radnor Elementary School. Prior to serving the school district, John has served our country in the armed services. And we are fortunate that we had 10 plus years with John at the helm of our maintenance department within the elementary school of Radnor. John, we thank you for your service. You have been missed since you left in October, uh, but we hope that retirement is treating you well and that you enjoy your time with your family and loved ones. Thank you. And I have Dr. Dave Weidlich who will be joining us now. Come on up, Renee. Good evening. I, uh, my name is Dave Weidlich, and I'm the principal of Radnor Middle School, and I'm very pleased and humbled to recognize uh, Mrs. Renee Romano. So Renee uh, has been an educator for over 23 years. Uh, most specifically, she's been a reading specialist uh, at Radnor Middle School for about 14. And during her time at Radnor Middle School, she has helped hundreds of students overcome reading deficits and challenges and guided them to the road of literacy success. Her innate abilities to connect with students, with staff, uh, and with the school community was nothing but remarkable and the influence and the impact that she's had on kids uh, and her colleagues is paramount. Renee was and is a consummate professional and an incredible student advocate who is grounded by her passion for education and in doing what is truly best for kids every single day. Renee, on behalf of all of Radnor Middle School and the Radnor Township School District community, we thank you for your years of service at RMS and we wish you much luck as you embark on a new path. Uh, personally speaking, I consider myself very lucky to have worked alongside you uh, for the past two years, and I wish nothing but the best for you and your family. You. So congratulations. Mr. Hearn, we're ready for you for transportation. Robert Berlenny, Lynn Vanderit, and Frank Bruno. I'm honored to speak tonight about several folks who have I, I have had the pl pleasure of working with for the last 23 years or longer. 
Together, this group has contributed over 90 years of combined service to the Transportation Department and to the Radnor community. It is a loss to our department, but together, we enjoy and remember their achievements. Frank Bruno. It's always an asset to have a retired police officer as a school bus driver. Since he is also a retired prison warder, warden, it was a perfect solution, and the results have been outstanding. As a special needs driver, his compassion and training are priceless. Frank has a dozen stories for every occasion, and he's more than happy to share them. Thank you, Frank, for your service. Enjoy and stay well. Lynn. Lynn has been a valuable member of our department for many years. During her time at Radnor, Lynn served as a true transportation icon in keeping our students safe. She was a regular member of the team that represented Radnor Transportation at the annual school bus rodeo. Thank you, Lynn, for your years of service. Enjoy and best wishes for a happy Ron has been a fa fantastic resource for everything Radnor Transportation. Ron was a member of a distinguished position known as school bus backup drivers. This small group of drivers are expected to know every route and jump into any position at any time without notice. With over 50 daily sometimes changing routes, it is quite an accomplishment. We had many, many time trials when planning routes for our late start challenge and his time and efforts were a major contribution to our success. Thank you, Ron, for your years of service. Enjoy the world of the I have had the pleasure of working with this gentleman for many years in our department service center. Known as Big Bob, he was responsible as mechanic supervisor for all maintenance and service requirements for the bus and vehicle fleet. Bob also recently retired the responsibility of union president for the operations staff. Bob's commitment to excellence is evident in the safe and efficient vehicles that leave our yard each morning. Robert, thank you for your years of service. Hope you and Marsha have many years of fun, sun, and fun. Mr. Hearn, I just want to set the record straight on uh, some rumors from 2017. Uh, 2017, I started as a superintendent, and a week and a half into being here, I had to call my first snow day. And uh, it was a week and a half, and I hadn't been over to transportation yet, and called the snow day and then drove in to check everything and see what's going on. So our transportation area, for those of you who have never been over there, it is a com compact, tight area. We just barely fit the buses that we have there. You add snow to the mix, and they got to clear all the snow out. They got to get the snow off all of the buses. It is an orchestrated, it's an orchestrated dance that Bob's part of, and uh, and and moving those buses. We have front end loaders, and here here comes the new superintendent in his Honda Accord driving right into the middle of that early in the morning. And the person on the front end loader was uh, was I, I'm gonna start calling you Robert now, Bob. I like that, Robert. Uh, <laughs> Robert was in the front end loader, and. Uh, I could see in his eyes the look of what is this guy and who is he and why he is, why is he in my parking garage uh, parking lot area right now, and uh, there's been many rumors about what actually occurred and what Bob said to me at that morning before he realized I was the new superintendent, and the truth of the fact is he was nothing but a gentleman and uh, it was something else was on your face but what you actually said, <laughs> and and I looked at him quickly and I said before you say anything. I'm the new superintendent, and he went, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, Bob, thank you, and all of the transportation, uh, and all of our retirees, but uh, I just wanted you, your, your dedication, uh, you know, people don't realize what happens on snow days behind the scenes, and what our transportation department not only does every day, but what you do behind the scenes uh, when the snow day hits, that you're all expected to be in uh, and clearing things. So uh, congratulations to all of you. Thank you, everyone. 
We're going to move into our next uh, item, which is a resolution of appreciation for retiring student representatives to the school board. And for this item, we will have Dr. Babson make the presentation, but I will entertain a motion and a second that the recommended action is that the board adopt the following resolution of appreciation in recognition of the service rendered by retiring student representatives, Avery Barber, Ellie Davis, and Sebastian Caper. Do I have a, a motion from Ms. Goldman and a second from Ms. Duffy? All those in favor? And the resolution passes eight to zero. And then Dr. Babson, if you'd like to read the resolution. Sure. So Sebastian and Ellie, you can come on up. Okay. All right. So the resolution of appreciation below has been prepared in recognition of the service of Avery Barber, who cannot make it here tonight, um, who has served as a student representative to the facilities committee of the school board. Ellie Davis, who has served as a student rep for the GRCC committee. And uh, Sebastian Caper, who served as a student rep for the curriculum committee. So the recommendation is that the board adopt the following resolution of appreciation in recognition of the service rendered by the retiring student reps, Avery, Ellie, and Sebastian. Whereas Avery, Ellie, and Sebastian have served the school district of Radnor Township, Delaware County, Pennsylvania, and student reps to the school board's facilities committee, GRCC, and curriculum committee, respectively. And whereas during that time, they have represented the students of Radnor presenting ideas and positions that have furthered the cause of effective and responsive educational principles and practices within RTSD. And whereas they have brought to their respective committees an interest in service to education and a spirit of cooperation. So now, therefore, be it resolved that in appreciation for their service, the members of the board and school directors hereby recognize and honor Avery Barber, Ellie Davis, and Sebastian Caper on the 29th day of June, 2021. Great, thank you. And now for our next uh, recognition resolution, I would entertain, oh, no, this is a recognition. So I will have, um, is it, are you going to read this, Ms. Duffy, or will Mr. Jubilee? Okay, you're going to read it down there. Great. So we're going to have Ms. Duffy and Mr. Jubilee handle the next two uh, recognitions. The first is the Radnor High School Boys Lacrosse Team wins the PIAA Class 3A State Championship. And the second is that the Radnor High School Girls Lacrosse Team wins the PIAA Class 3A State Championship. So the Radnor High School School Boys Lacrosse Team won the PIAA Class AAA State Lacrosse Championship for the first time since 2015 with the 10-2 victory over Kennett High School on June 2nd at Westchester East High School. The 2021 Central League champions entered the state tournament as the three seed from District 1 and defeated Central York High School 13 to 5, Wilson High School 15 to 3, and Conestoga High School 13 to 5. I'm going to repeat that. Conestoga High School 15 to 5. <laughs> to reach to reach the state championship. With the girls lacrosse team also winning the state championship, the two 2021 state titles mark the first time in the 108 year history of the Pennsylvania Athletic Interscholastic Association that both teams of the same sport from the same high school won the state championship in the same season. That deserves a round of applause.
boys lacrosse team are seniors, Chris Beezer. Charlie Berniker, Drew Cox, Reese Evans, Thomas Hannum, Robert Hobbs, Ryan Hornbaker, Mark McKeon, Jack Murphy, Casey Odd, Grant Pierce, Damian Ramondo, Carson Smith, and Peter Vitale. The juniors are Thomas Barton, Mason Brown, Nate Brown, Sammy Carter, Will Gallagher, Ryan Goldstein, Will Kaplan, Nick Lucchese, CJ Murphy, Gordy Ramondo, Jason Trosset, and Ryan Webb. Sophomores are Luciano Chata, Nick DeCane. take some pictures in the in the lobby there with you guys so congratulations again I'd like to offer to our student athletes I may get in trouble for this but there there is retirement cake out there and I'm not sure the retirees ate it all and girls if I tell the guys they can have it they don't think they can hear me which is good there might not be any left but the, the, oh good good students want to eat the cake please help yourself I think the girls should have gone first <laughs> yeah the Radnor High School girls lacrosse team won the PIAA AAA state lacrosse championship for the first time since 2017 when with an 11-5 dismantling destroying victory over Mannheim Township on June 12th at Westchester East High School team entered the tournament as well as the number three seed from District 1 and decimated Southwestern High School 17 to nil, Owen J. Roberts High School 15 to three, and Conestoga 12 to nine <laughs> to reach the championship game. With the boys lacrosse team also winning a championship, the two 2021 state titles, as we've learned before, marked the first time again in the wonder and eight year history of the PIAA that both teams are the same
same sport from the same high school won the championship, the state championship in the same season. The members of the Radnor High School girls lacrosse team are, and why don't we have everyone come on up? We'll give you. Seniors, by alphabetical order, Sally Austin. <laughs> Avery, uh, Avery Seattle. Mary Kate Colloran. <laughs> Katie Deshawn. Tori DiCarlo. Sheila Escrow, <laughs> Sophia Hoy, <laughs> Sierra Hobson, <laughs> Abby Jansen, <laughs> Margaret Mooney, <laughs> Sarah Nelson. Elise Palmer, <laughs> and Ellie Reinhardt. <laughs> Juniors, Julie Breedfeld, <laughs> Molly Haas, <laughs> Olivia Kelly, <laughs> Karis, Karis Maminiscus. If I got that wrong, I apologize. <laughs> Amelia Reinhold, <laughs> Telly and Schwartz, <laughs> and Courtney Wolfington. <laughs> Sophomores, Lauren Goldstein, <laughs> and Paige Yerchik. <laughs> Finally, freshman, Kate Gallagher, <laughs> Margot Johnson. Sarah Kelly. <laughs> the team is led by head coach Kristen Addis, assistant coaches Nicole Caniglia and Shannon McGarrigal. <laughs> the superintendent, along with the board and the Radnor community, congratulates these student athletes, their parents, and coaches on their outstanding accomplishments. to Mr. 
Mr. Michael Petiti, Radnor Township School District, 135 South Wayne Avenue, Wayne, PA, 19087. And at this time, we will entertain public comment. I'm sorry, could you come to the podium and sure. give your name if you would I'm like? I'm not going to do that, so that's my oh, question. I'm, well, so that's my question. I mean, I feel like under the current political climate and with the fact that all of this is streamed in front of the internet, to stand here and to give my name and my home address and then say things that my other people might have a serious problem with, I, I don't feel like that's the best or safest way to do things. Is there a way to present a driver's license to somebody privately or handle it in just a more secure way? So I'm, I don't know your name, and okay. I'm going to check with the solicitor, but my understanding is you are welcome to submit a comment to our board. Okay. It, as individual board members, all of our email addresses are on the district website, or you could submit a comment uh, to Mr. Michael Petiti and ask him that he share it with the board if you don't feel comfortable giving your name and address tonight. I'm, I'm answering this. I'm happy to answer this procedural. Excuse me. You still have to announce your name and address. Ms. Booker. So when you come to the podium, the policy, if you'd like to make public comment, is that you come to the podium and give your name and address. That is our board policy. If you would like to share a comment with our board, but prefer not to do it publicly, you are welcome to, to write to the board, and all of our email addresses are available. I, I do appreciate that. It just seems that you know public comments can maybe be Ms. more impactful, Excuse me. and I just find this to be uh, unsafe. You know, uh, given the way things are today. Great. Mr. Christofko, could you please provide, this is our solicitor, and this is public comment. The, uh, the way that the board policy is currently written is that the public commenters have to give their name and address. Um, in the past, people have not given a specific house number. They've just given a street. Um, so uh, uh, that's what has been acceptable in the past. But the policy is not written in a way which allows for um, public commenters to bypass that requirement. Uh, and that stems from the, um, the Sunshine Act, which um, uh, requires that the uh, board accept uh, comments from uh, residents uh, and taxpayers. So that's uh, to ensure that the people providing the comment uh, have the appropriate interest. Okay, so we can do it with a street without an exact house address. Uh, yeah, in the past, that has, uh, that's been done. Okay, thank you. Okay, so at this time, I will entertain public comment. Do we have any public comment? Okay. Um, so please address the board with your name and address. Good evening. Eugene Huff, 115 Cumberland Place. Um, my, I am an educator, a preservationist, and a veteran. Um, one of the things I've been involved with in preservation education projects is not only in Radnor, but in different states. With the 250th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration coming up, one of the things that's fascinated me Mr. Hoff, I'm so sorry, but public comment is a time for you to address the board president. It's not a time to make a presentation to the public. So if you'd like to address your comments to the board, you are welcome to do so. I was turning my back to him. I didn't that, that is, unfortunately, that is the nature of the setup in the room, but you are welcome to make public comment to the board. This map was uh, designed with like And I'm sorry, you need to stand at the podium so that the comments can be heard. On. I'm sorry, the meeting is live streamed. If you're not at the podium, then the public at home is not able to hear the comments. Can you hear me now? You don't have to stand quite that close, but yes. This, this map was designed by the Robertson family in 1943 and then revised in 1946. Is this the board here? This form right here. So anyway, the interesting thing about this map, and I know I have four minutes, so I need to be brief, is the goal to try to bring forward for students in the Radnor Township, starting in middle school, going up to high school, to learn about the local history. When I was in Georgia working with rural black students at a school, I asked them if they knew anything about Anthony Wayne, and they said, yeah, they were going to give him a governorship, but um, he couldn't do that because he was a Pennsylvanian at the time. What fascinated me was that in doing projects in different states in economically depressed areas as well as more influenced areas, 
There's a dire need, I think, where Radnor students can act as mentors to share their local history with students in other states. There are great opportunities there. Again, two, over two million people come to Valley Forge each year to see the park. They receive brochures. They want to learn about Wayne, and from an economic standpoint, our students can be ambassadors for engaging these people when they come to our community. But most importantly, individuals overseas are interested in our country's history. They want to learn about the success stories. Our students can do that. I have some brochures here each year for the last 10 years. I've been doing conservation on the Wayne Memorial um, Monument there, and with the Conestoga Cemetery coming up into play, each community has historical narratives. Cemeteries are an open-air classroom. We can use this an engaging process for at-risk youth, challenged youth, as students as well, sharing our local narrative. I look in the publications, Radner's up, up there with reporting in terms of academics and all the things going on, and then I look at communities down in Georgia that would direly need some mentorship, maybe leading towards our senior years. We could use some of our students to communicate and engage them in communities it's a powerful thing. The technology is out there, but slowing down is the way we need to go. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Hi there. Can you hear me okay? Like yeah. This yes. Is distance okay? Yeah, it's okay. great. Thanks. Um, Cameron Azarano, Willow Avenue, mother of three Radnor Raiders forever. So I will begin tonight by stating what I did in my very first public comment three months ago. Truly what I say to you I don't believe matters. The opportunity for cooperation, collaboration, and compromise was never on the table. Why do I know this? Because of the public display of indifference to the majority voice. This is not my opinion. This is fact, as proven by the petition, change the mascot, keep the name, with well over 2,600 signatures, the school district public poll showing over 75% support for Raider, and the simple fact that the now chosen name Raptor was voted out of the committee process not once, but twice. So, so how could it be that we are here today with the name Raptor? You should listen. Raptors are solitary birds. They are solitary because they do not share either their territory or their prey. They steal and they kill what is not theirs. Ironic, don't you think? You, a school board who independently in a single meeting during the pandemic made a decision to steal a 90 year history that was not yours to take. <laughs> the Radner, the Radner Raptor School Board. How fitting. The saddest part of all of this is that the name itself doesn't really matter and I truly believe that. It doesn't matter. What matters are the people, the relationships, and the ability for this community to take on challenges together, to overcome them together. That is the example that we had an opportunity to set for our children and you stole that from us. I would like to note the steady support from one of our school board members and the other two who had the courage to humble themselves and try to work to correct the wrong that ensued. How unfortunate your colleagues saw otherwise. Out of the six comments from the board members post all of the public comment, comments, it was clear there never was and there never will be concrete, specific, factual, data and evidence to support the removal of the name Raider. The idea we as an intelligent and caring community cannot separate the imagery from the name is a matter of distrust. You do not trust this community. Therefore, we do not trust you. We do not. 
We do not trust you with your decisions regarding our school name, current curriculum issues, and COVID handling. And we will work together to get board members who are in place to be balanced in their thought and properly represent Ms. Alzarano, the you're entire at four minutes. Radnor community as we all deserve. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to entertain public comment. We know that emotions are very high. This is just going to cut into individual commenters four minutes, and I think you all want to hear their comments. So I would encourage you while people are speaking, you know, if you, I, I understand that emotions are high tonight, but we do want to hear the commenters. Thank you. Go ahead. Welcome. Kyle Addis, Askin Road, Radnor class of 2018 and former class president. Tonight I would like to address the agenda item of the approval of the new nickname. As a former member of the Radnor rebranding committee and an alum who has watched this entire process play out, I would simply like to state the facts of what has happened. So early on, the committee was formed, composed of 41 members with the goal of selecting a new nickname. As Ms. Azarano just mentioned, the committee originally removed the name Raptor, eliminated it, as it did not meet the six guiding principles, including exuding positive qualities, promoting school pride and generating excitement, honoring Radnor traditions and history, and reflecting the standards and values of RTSD and representing all stakeholders. It does not meet one of those. In one of our final meetings, after the name was brought back, an administrator who is sitting in this room voiced his concerns over the name and its Latin roots. And I quote, he was concerned that people might refer to us as the Radnor Rapers. Following this discussion, 18 people voted no for the name, while 11 voted yes, a significant margin of defeat. And the very next day, the name was brought back by the administration, sending that name along with the other three to be voted on by the students at Radnor. As we know, the student vote ended up with the name Raptors winning after the rebranding committee eliminated it twice and the administration brought it back twice. This name received 55% of the vote with the R nickname receiving 45, proving the divide you all created in our school district. And let me add, 50% of the senior class did not even vote, which was because they were no longer in class and set to graduate two days later, 50%. So given the flaws in this process, I urge you to vote no to the Raptor nickname. Um, I have a few more things I'd like to state before I finish up. Um, as we all know, the NCAI, who met with administration, board members, and community members, said Raiders could be rebranded, unlike names such as Indians and Redskins. The school district in Virginia, referenced by Amy Goldman in the special board meeting of May, in May, who also retired their Raider nickname and logo, um, had ties to Confederate, it had a Confederate roots. So we had a board member comparing our situation to one a district that had Confederate roots. Just let that sink in for a minute. Also in the May board meeting, school board member Sarah Dunn expressed her support for the Raptors name when she knew she had no power over how that vote went in the committee meeting. Or did she? Mr. Addis. Was she the reason the Excuse Raptors me, name Addis. came back after being eliminated by a majority of the committee twice? Finally, I will acknowledge that I have spoken to eight of the nine school board members up here since last July, some on multiple occasions. So thank you for that. But the one who never once returned any of my emails is Andrew Babson. Andrew, you were the, you were the one just a few weeks ago, and you, and you smirk, who expressed how you were happy to have conversations with anyone about this topic. As someone who was elected to represent the constituents of Radnor Township, please do better. I know you do not agree with me, but ignoring every one of my emails Mr. is disrespectful Mr. to say the least. You need to direct your comments to the board president. Thank I you. I could not be more embarrassed to be a Radnor alum over the course of the past year. The lack of process. Four minutes has expired. 
The lack of process, creativity, and respect that I've witnessed Mrs. since Stern, last July been four minutes. has been disgusting. And it all comes back to the nine of you. When will the real leader step up and make sure such important decisions like this one? My name is Charles no, D. Excuse, Barber. Excuse me. I'm going to yield to you. My, I'm going to yield my four minutes to this gentleman. Four minutes. My name is Charles D. Chuck Barber. I live at 228 Hilldale Road in Villanova. I'm incensed by the actions of this group. Uh, and Mr. I hope Barber. you're all ashamed. But anyway, I yield my time. I appreciate okay. it. When will the real leaders step up uh, and make point sure of order. such an important decision like Madam this President, point of order. is made the right way? As long as Madam the President, I'm leaders, raising a point of order. Most of you simply do not care how the new Mr. name Addis, gets selected. Mr. Addis, excuse Kyle, hold me, on. just the Mr. Addis, hold on. Please hold on. Madam, I have a point of order. I, procedure I need to use. Yes, Mr. Moore. Is there, excuse me. is there a mechanism in our procedures to yield time in public comment? There is not. There is not. And I'll tell him. Okay, he's going to tell me, and then I'll tell you. Excuse me. Mr. Addis? Mr. Your Addis. The approval of the nickname tonight confirms that process, dialogue, and democracy are of no importance to you. You have successfully canceled our 87 year old nickname with not one in person meeting taking place. No opportunity for the rebranding committee and community to engage in face to face dialogue. No opportunity for high school students to have face-to-face -face conversations about this topic and be involved in the process. And a missed opportunity to educate our students and community on the history of our, of our school nickname. A nickname that has served as an important identity for generations of Radnor families and a name that will continue to do so for years to come. Go Raiders. Thank you. You all should be ashamed of yourselves. Falcone, uh, 312 Joseph Drive, Westchester, Pennsylvania, Radner Class of 74, also chair of the Radner Husbands organization. You know, when I was selected to be part of the rebranding committee, I thought it was an honor and an opportunity to represent the Husbands who have been in existence since 1945, representing anybody that's played football at Radner over those years, and have an opportunity to let the board, the committee know that the majority of my membership, the membership of the Hasbins, is really standing behind the Raider name and didn't want to see it changed. So it was a good opportunity to be part of that. So first committee meeting, right out of the gate we're told Raiders are off the table. But we had separate groupings and everybody went out and voiced their opinion. And the majority of people in both groups said, why are we doing this? We're pro Raider, we've got a lot of history behind us. This process hasn't played out really well. Our first homework assignment, the first question was, why do you feel we should keep the Raider name? If the Raider name was off the table, why did you even put that in front of us for consideration? We came back the following week and the same resounding you know, message was, we want to keep the Raider name. So then we went to a public opinion poll. 1,313 votes, 992, 75% voted for Raider. The next highest vote was Griffin at 49. Raptors came in at 37, 125th of the number of votes that were for the Raider. That was an opportunity where the chairs of the committee could have come back to the board and said, you know what, if we're really operating this as a completely independent group, not beholden to the board, we would suggest that the board's been a little hasty in her decision to get rid of the Raider name and maybe ought to rethink it and have a more formal drawn out process to, to determine what the community wants, what the alumni want, and what the students want. But no, you're next on that opportunity. In the May meeting, Nancy Monahan, Liz Duffy, and Jeff Jubilee are put together an unbelievably compromised solution that would appease both groups. You shot it down six to three. Another opportunity wasted. Now we're sitting in front of the board tonight. The name Raptors is out there. Nobody's happy with the Raptors name. Go through the opinions of the committee, the community, 
the alumni, et cetera. Again, you're going to see 75% would vote against this name. You have an opportunity to right the wrong that you created back in September. We're asking you to reconsider it, vote down the Raptors. We are Radnor. We're Radnor Raiders. Radnor Raiders for life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Falcone. Good evening. I'll keep my comments short. My name is Ellie Davis, and I'm a rising senior at Radnor High School, and I believe because I'm a current student, I don't need to give my address. Is that correct? That's been my policy, yes. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for your continuous work serving Radnor. RTSD's main focus is, of course, serving the students and providing an excellent environment of learning. And according to the student vote, of all high school students and eighth graders, Raptors is the most popular option for our new nickname. 67.76% of the student body in grades eight through 12 voted, which is a better turnout rate than any of the US presidential elections. With such division and without a lot of students- Excuse me, Ms. Stern, could the public refrain from commenting while Ms. Davis is speaking? No, it, it's disruptive and it's disrespectful. So this is public comment and the speaker has the floor. And I will ask that the, co the commenters in the, co in the audience please be respectful of every speaker who comes to the podium. Every speaker who comes to the podium will be treated with respect. Thank you. Continue, Ms. Davis. Thank you. As I was saying, with such division and without a lot of students here tonight, it can be easy to lose sight of the majority rule of the students. The 552 students who took the time to vote for Raptors are excited to be represented by these fierce predatory birds. When these 552 students see a red-tailed hawk, an owl, or the occasional bald eagle, they will be reminded of Radnor's new identity. And I ask that you honor the student's decision and vote to approve Raptors as Radnor's new mascot. Thank you all for your continued work in the rebranding process. It's clearly not an easy job, so thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Do we have more? Oh, public comment, welcome. Good evening, I'm Kaki Martin. I live on Conestoga Road. I'd like to ask each board member to reject the Raptor name. As a committee member, we rejected the Raptor name twice. Raptor does not honor or respect Radnor's history or traditions. I would be embarrassed to wear a Raptor's jersey. Having studied Latin, I recognize, as did the co-chairs of our committee, the link to the Latin word for rape. I think this would be a terrible connection for the students in Radnor. I think the process of choosing new respectful imagery for our Radnor Raider name can be safely and effectively done in person. Mrs. Duffy, please reject Raptor. Mrs. Goldman, please reject Raptor. Mrs. Monahan, please reject Raptor. Mrs. Dunn, please reject Raptor. Mrs. Stern, please reject Raptor. Mrs. Solomon, please reject Raptor. Mr. Jubilee, please reject Raptor. Mr. Moore, please reject Raptor. Dr. Babson, please reject Raptor. Thank you for your time and consideration. Welcome. Welcome, Thomas Bolden. I live at 604 Kirsch Avenue in Wayne. And uh, I'm here as a resident. I have a daughter who graduated from Radnor. I have a son at Radnor. And I'm also here to comment on the process, or I should say the lack of process has been followed. The process has been broken from the beginning. And when you have board members sit there and acknowledge that they did not have the time to properly do it, you can't have a vote. You are fiduciaries. And as fiduciaries, the process is really important in how you get to the end result. This process has been broken since the beginning. You jammed it through during a pandemic when you couldn't have in-person meetings. There was a notice that was done, done quickly. You had, had things were not supposed to be voted on. When you have the National Congress of American Indians telling you that the Raider name is not offensive, who are any of you to say that it is. What right do you have to say when the American Congress of American Indians says it's not offensive, it's offensive. 
You haven't done your homework. You haven't done your job. And for you to sit here now and do this in a hurry, it's ridiculous. Listen to the voters. When 992 people say, we want to use the Raider name, and when the board continually says, the committee said, we don't want to use the Raider name, you decided to change the rules. And I looked at the one rule that came out, and rule number one was the, the board can do whatever they want. The committee chair can change the rules. What sort of a lesson are you giving to our students when you constantly change the process? There should be a process in place from the beginning. And while I know I'm just sitting here wasting my time because this was all preordained, I'd at least like to thank you for my time and ask all of you to take a pledge. If it's more than $158,000, are you personally going to cover the costs? Because we all know, we all know that that was a sham of a quote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bolden.
My son's team consists of players from Radnor, Great Valley, Springford, Philadelphia, and Reading. The players and families represent different races, religions, nationalities, and socioeconomic backgrounds. There was diversity. There was inclusion. Was there equity? Well, some players played better than others, but they won the championship and they all enjoyed spending time together. The boys got along beautifully. I realized that while the players had many differences among them, they had one thing in common in addition to their love for basketball, and that was that none of them were in Radnor classes where devices, divisive activities are happening. I would like to ask each board member and everyone here listening tonight to pull up the video, This is America by Childish Gambino. This is America by Childish Gambino. It is violent, it is explicit, explicit and it is vile. And it was shown in our ninth grade government class last this past school year. I would also ask that you all look up the Youth Privilege Aptitude Test by the National Civil Rights Museum. This was given by our seventh grade language arts teachers in our middle school. I shudder to think how my son and his teammates would look at each other if they saw those things in their classes together. I would love for a board member or an administrator or a teacher to explain to me how those two classroom activities help to establish diversity, inclusion, and equity better than what my husband and I did with our boys this past weekend, or what our ABC house does, or what the many Radner families achieve by opening up their homes to at-risk youth so that they can achieve a Radner education. I assert that actions like showing This is America too, and using a privilege test with our students harm diversity, equity, and inclusion in the name of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now my questions. Why are we paying for outside organizations to come into our community and train our teachers how to teach our children how to treat each other? I'd love to know the costs of those activities. If you are going to train our teachers in anything other than how to improve their teaching of academic subjects, why don't you bring in organizations to teach character? You see anyone from any race, any religion, any socioeconomic background, and any nationality can have good character. Organizations such as the Travis Mannion Foundation and Character First help schools work with students to, and I quote, cultivate a set of inter and intrapersonal skills that provide the framework to build and execute ethical behavior and build community, build community. Four I minutes is up. I challenge anyone to name one social ill that cannot be avoided if people have solid character. In Radnor, we like to say that we are leaders in education. Well, I challenge this board, our administrators and our teachers to lead rather than follow the woke divisive trend, divisive trend in education that is tearing our communities and our nation as a whole apart, even if it means that you have to deny federal funds. By virtue Ms. of Ms. your Doyle, position on the up. board, you have the opportunity to unite our community in several ways around educational excellence that involves developing true critical thinking in our children by presenting issues from all different angles. By focusing on Ms. developing- Ms. Doyle, you are now at five minutes. Please I have finish. a second. By focusing on developing positive character traits in our children rather than fostering political tendencies. By cooperating with your constituents, your neighbors, to honor the traditions and desires of the community at large rather than cater to a few special interests or advance your own agendas. You have the opportunity to make one Radner more than just a hashtag I ask that you do that. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you.
you. I'm Marty Berniker, and I live at 107 Hillside Circle in Villanova, Radnor Township. On behalf of our family, my husband Chuck and I and our four sons, I wanted to come here tonight to say thank you. Our official Radnor School District educational journey began almost 20 years ago when my son was entering kindergarten at Radnor Elementary School. And we went out into the parking lot where he had a chance to get on a yellow Radnor school bus at five years old. And the way it went was first they saw a video that was educational and engaging. And then they met the bus driver and then they got on the bus and they drove around the parking lot. And that was the first of many experiences where Radnor went above and beyond for our kids. It had the essential ingredients. Number one, educating and engaging. Number two, relationship with an important adult who made our kids feel heard and seen. And number three, it was also a chance to um, try things out and get exposed to things. Our Radnor journey ended 20 years later after four kids and 52 grades, with my youngest son riding on a, relo, re, a yellow Radnor school bus with the winning lacrosse team, the girls bus next to him, coming into town with a police motorcycle escort and with the fire trucks with their sirens and their lights and the ambulances. And they drove through Wayne while people poured out of the restaurants and cheered them on and celebrated their success after a really, really hard year. And um, driving through Wayne with his teammates, the girls' bus was there too. In between these two bookends, our four boys went through a lot of different things. They're really different kids. They're really different learners with different interests and styles. But we can say unequivocally that they got what they wanted and they got what they needed. They were exposed to so many things, it's impossible to sum it up, but I'm just gonna give you a three, couple illustrative points. Number one, we're proud to go to an elementary school where the paint bucket for uh, lunch with the principal was overflowing, where kindergartners and elementary schools wanted to have lunch with the principal. My husband turned around to me and said, wow, we never wanted to see the principal. <laughs> where uh, boys and girls practiced for weeks to have a lead in the, in the uh, play, the musical at RES, which was always so incredible and everybody could find a part. Where kids poured out of the middle schools on Friday afternoons to go into the community like they own the town and then later feel like engaged citizens, like they know all the, the business owners and everything. And where my high school, um, where they have traditions like LM week and painting and sports and chances to be in the band. And um, my son is a sophomore at Yale Law School and when I asked him about his most transformational educational experience, he said Model UN at Radnor. And so um, I just wanted to share that because, um, you know, I think it's really hard work what educators do. I work in a profession where we're in 40 different schools. I'm never in a school at night when I leave there at 9.30 or 10 and in the Radnor schools where the administrators are not there, some of your board members, lots of your teachers, many of your students and parents. And so with everything going on, I promised myself that after 20 amazing years in Radnor that we would take the opportunity to express our gratitude as a family. So thank you very much for all that you've done for the Bernickers and so many others like them. I know it's not easy work and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Berniker. Do we have more public comment? Oh, welcome, Ms. McNally. Mrs. Berniker, that, where is she? Where's Mrs. Berniker? That was amazing. Tell Ryan I said hi. It's great. Um, good evening. My name is Amy McNally, and I'm the vice president of the Radnor Township Education Association. Unfortunately, Rob King, our president, could not attend this evening. He was very disappointed, but I told him I would read his statement um, on behalf of Radnor's 320 members. He says, what a year. I know the phrase has been repeated countless times, but the quasi-unbelievable reality of the past year and a half make it worth repeating. The unique and, off and often unexpected situations made this past year difficult for everyone, students, the professionals of RTA, parents, and school board members. Yet thankfully, we made it to the end of the year, having <laughs> made the most of this year's unusual circumstances. Despite all the challenges associated with the different modes of learning, fully virtual, hybrid, and back to in-person with some students remaining virtual, we believe that everyone, 
teachers, professionals, paraeducators, custodians, bus drivers, maintenance, cafeteria, workers, and administrators involved with the education of Radnor students did their very best for our students and deserve wholehearted recognition for the dedication, creativity, and performance. So this evening, we were lucky enough to hear um, of about five of our most beloved members. Um, I know I was touched very much. And on behalf of every member of RTA, we want these members to know that they are irreplaceable and that they will always be remembered in the hearts and minds of their students that they impacted every day. RTA also wants to acknowledge the work of both administration and the school board. Although there were moments, we all know what we're talking about, of uncertainty that led to tension and some difficult conversations, we want the school board and administration to know that RTA appreciates the time you spent in many meetings and long nights working on plans for our schools and the education of Radnor students, only to have to revise those plans throughout the year as, COVID as the COVID-19 situation continued to evolve. Now, those of you who know Rob King know he cannot end something without a quote, so here's the quote. In closing, I find the following idea expressed by the existential philosopher Soren Kierkegaard fitting to our current situation. I have, I have paraphrased his much longer expression into the following. We, meet, we need to look to the past to understand the present, but we must also remember to live for the future. I think I can safely say that we all look forward to a return to a normal start to the 2021-2022 school year. However, we are all also aware that the normal we once knew will no longer exist in the future. May we have the collective wisdom to learn from the past year and a half and apply the lessons to the future. In any case, the proud professionals of RTA, after a much needed break to restore and recharge, look forward to returning to the classroom in September to resume the vital work of educating our students and preparing them for the future that awaits them. In the meantime, we wish the board, administration, students, parents, everybody a happy and relaxing summer. And I would like to add, and this is from Amy McNally, Vice President, um, I've spoken to several of my former students tonight who are speaking. I am proud of them. I'm proud for their grace, for their respect, and for the way they've been conducting themselves. No matter what side of, the, side of this debate you're on with the mascot, these children are amazing. I'm proud of them. Thank you. Step closer to the mic so they can hear. Thank you. Um, I'm a 13, um, almost 14 year resident of Radnor. Um, we moved here for the strong, strong sense of community and pride and the solid school reputation. In those 13 years, though, both now seem to be in question. Uh, tonight, you are about to dismantle decades of history, pride, and community over a mascot, a mascot that has no connection to racism or hate or any substantial claims that the Raider has caused emotional, physical, spiritual, intellectual harm to any student, past or present. Instead, you seek to install a new mascot that has lineage to rape and sexual violence against women. Um, it's almost unreal. Think about the blatant hi hypocrisy in removing a name that has no viable connection to an evil, but installing one that has a connection. This process has been a sham from the beginning. Uh, we deserve a fair and transparent process, free and organic. We deserve to have a say in the future of our community, a say in the allocation of our precious tax dollars, and the opportunity to have a mascot process that includes the option to keep the Raider name. I used the word reputation in my first paragraph, and that was by design. Reputation is just that, a commonly held belief about something. Reputation can only get one so far because sooner or later there's a reckoning and folks begin to see what things are, what things are really all about. Right now our reputation as a township and school district is running on fumes. Tonight let's make this right. Thank you. Welcome. Belrose Lane. Glad to be on this side and not that side. I'm sure this past year has been really difficult, so I, I do not envy you. Very glad I've not been involved. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've been 12 years on the board, so I, I know what that feels like. Um, you all were elected to this school board to represent the community. Over the last weeks and months, I have watched you ignore and even actually disqualify community input on a number of critical issues set before you. While the debate over the identification of Radner as the Raiders 
pales in comparison to some of the more important educational initiatives. It is the agenda item that you are going to uh, vote on this evening, and so it's a priority for me to come and speak on the matter. I will leave it to the others to shed the light on just how bad this process has been. I, I could go on and on, but I want to put my time elsewhere. Um, I'm here tonight to make it clear that the issue is not over. Whether you vote on it tonight or not, the issue is not over. So Mrs. Stern. <laughs> sorry, she had to leave for the evening, but Mrs. Stern. No, she did not leave for the evening. She had to go I to would, the restroom. I would like to uh, inform you this evening that tonight we launched a petition signing calling for this board to add a referendum question to the November ballot to enable the community to have a real voice in the naming of the Raider. Because you refuse to listen to the group that's behind me and the group who has been online and the group who has come to meeting after meeting after meeting, signed petitions, nearly a thousand people signing a petition and you chose to disqualify it. So allow me to read the petition so that you are formally aware of what we're doing. By signing this petition, I join other community members requesting the Radnor School Board to make it possible for the voters of Radnor to approve by majority vote the following referendum question in the general election on November 2nd, 2021. The question is, do you favor the Radnor School Board directors recognize the legacy of the Radnor Raider as an important identification of the students and the alumni of Radnor High School and Middle School, one that honors strength loyalty and tenacity, not division or racism, and as such, want them to reinstate the name Raider as the school's identifier or nickname. With that, we will be bringing back to you, and our expectation is to do so by September, thousands of signatures from the community to demonstrate that you really should listen. We kicked off the signature collection this evening. For those of you who are in the audience and didn't have a chance yet to sign it, please do on your way out. It's on the table out there. If anybody wants to help collect, please let me know. I'm happy. To, I've got lots of copies to bring to give you this evening. We will be in the middle of Wayne on Saturday, July 10th and 17th, and other dates to be announced in the future to give those uh, who would like to sign the petition a chance to come see us. We will also be going door to door to be sure that the whole community is aware of this and other critical matters in the Radnor schools under your direction. You have a chance to fix what this broken process has been and rebuild the community trust. And if not, there's elections on November 2nd. Good evening, Matt Marshall, 228 Walnut Avenue. Um, I'm going to have a handout. Mrs. Stern, can I pass that out now or do we have to wait? If you want to leave it um, to the side, we can get it after the after public comment. Okay, Is I'd it like for each of you to read this because this actually ties into what I said last week. But please, whoever is responsible for getting information to the board. Um, I sat on the board, I put my hand on the Bible, I was uh, K through 12 at Radnor uh, School District. My parents who, uh, by intent, left Lower Marion, came to Radnor in 1959. I had seven family members, brothers and sisters, who all went K through 12 um, at Radnor. Um, I parented two children, K through 12, from Radnor, and I was uh, formerly on the dais as a commissioner. So. I have some experience. Um, the article that I just left with Mr. Buckhold describes in detail um, a, a time when uh, Mrs. Stern was with, uh, I don't know what organization, but she witnessed a uh, RFP process where we tried to provide better value for the taxpayers. Uh, and through a process, we voted to remove our solicitor. Right now, I think it's. Um, the person who's not even looking. But um, it, at that time, it was uh, John Rice. And as I said to you last time I was here, uh, we've, we voted him out by legislation. It was signed off on. And three meetings later, by a uh, party vote, he was reinstated. 
so the only reason i'm making that case is what you vote out can be voted back in that's first uh, secondly i think by definition the word bystander is a person who is present at an event or in an inc at an incident but does not take part right I, I explained to you some of the family history here but i can assure you through the last I guess we're going on almost 12 months since August of last year. Your taxpayers, your alumni, your parents, recent grads, and I, I call out recent grads because who in their right mind would come before a board like this and give an opinion about such a dis divisive issue? I mean, you know, let's just knock out, uh, you know, all your graduates from 2015 to 2020, except for Kyle, who has more courage than I've ever seen someone his age, but, but think about it. I mean, who's going to come up here, cameras blaring, who's going to want to come up here and take a stand? And, and I believe me, I've pulled a lot of my children's friends, and they're with most of the people in the audience. So I just want to remind you, and this is my, this is my discussion, I, I, you know, I am about good governance. It's left Radnor Township. Um, there's been no transparency in the process, it's been divisive, and it, it's actually been clumsy, to say the least. It's been clumsy, what this board has done. Um, you have my handout, I hope you read it, and I hope you take note, because as Patty said, with a petition, a referendum, these decisions can be changed. We don't want to be spending precious taxpayer dollars on a rebranding program that might be reversed in January. And I'll just leave you with this. I mean, y you have decided, with the exception of Mr. Jubilee, Ms. Duffy, and Ms. Monahan, where compromise could have occurred a couple weeks ago, this board voted that out six to three. So, you know, unfortunately, that's the Four legacy this board expired. will have. But I just want to say something because of the tone deathness of this board. Um, Kids are signing up to skip a grade, come back as a sophomore, or come back as a junior next year. And this is brand new. I don't know if Harrisburg has alerted you, but you may be seeing kids repeat a grade from last year. Think about that. Think about a parent who sits out here, pays taxes, does homework every night with their children, and now they're facing the prospect of having their child repeat a grade. Mr. Because Marshall, 2020 wasn't a good year, Mrs. Stern. But I'll tell you, the worst part about it is you've, you've created severe mental anguish and harm to your students. Welcome. Hello, my name is Annika Van Rossum. And just really quick, we're talking about, pro first, actually, let's start with this. Thank you. You guys have had a very open process. People have been heard. For over a year, you may laugh, but it has happened. Facts are facts. Over a year, you have had meetings with students, with alumni. You have had people give all of their opinions for time after time after time. Frankly, you have given more than I think most communities give in issues like this. There are states that have actually passed laws that ban Native American mascots, and that was put to a vote, and done is done. So I just want to start that you guys have actually done a lot for this community and you've been very open to everyone and, and even Ross, I'm, I'm so sorry could you just give your street address oh you yeah I live on South Roberts Road in Primar. Um and even to the board members who I disagree with you have still been a part of the process and that's amazing and if we want to talk about history and we want to talk about an open process and Mr. Marshall is talking about excluding my grade my alumni doesn't sound like a very open process to me but we want to talk about history my grandparents were here. They raised my family in the Radnor school system. Me and all my siblings went to the Radnor school system. We all played Radnor sports, and we have all returned to Radnor. And we want to be heard on this issue, and we want to talk about history and how much history matters. The true history of this nation is that there were millions upon millions of Native Americans here, and white people came, and they put them in reservations, and that is what happened. And you want, uh, this is my time. And you, I sat there respectfully, you will sit there respectfully for me. And you, there's been talk about critical race theory throughout the nation, teaching the true history of what happened in this country, teaching about Native Americans. We're talking about honoring Native Americans. You do not honor them with a mascot that portrays one image. Native Americans are not violent. They are not raiders. They do not run around and bash in skulls and do the tomahawk.
tomahawk chop like I've seen at every Radnor rally. They are healers, they have government, they are sovereign nations, and many of your students don't know that. So if we want to talk about actually honoring Native Americans, as I've heard much of the people talk about with the mascot, why not teach the real history of this nation? Why not talk about every single tribe that we have? Why not talk about the Leni Lenape that live, whose land that we stand on, that we have taken from them? But that doesn't seem to be part of the conversation. The conversation is about you. The conversation is about what will you lose? You lose nothing. It is, I hope, I so hope, you all enjoyed your time at Radnor, as I did. I hope you enjoyed your sports. I hope you enjoyed the memories you made with friends. I hope you still have those friends today, just like I do, who I have cherished for 10 plus years now. One of my oldest friends I met in Radnor. What I don't cherish is a mascot that offends people, that offends people that I've had the good fortune of now leaving Radnor and being exposed to such a wonderful, diverse world of people. And I have to look at them and say, oh, I returned to a town with a mascot that makes fun of you, that depicts you in a way that you not are. So frankly, you know, you guys should really have enjoyed your time at Radnor, but this is not part of your memories. This is about you, and it is not about the people across this nation, the 4.5 million Native Americans who have been asking for change. And there is article, there is speaker, there is tribe after tribe. And frankly, I don't need to say much more. It's kind of tiring at this point because you have been presented with all the facts and there's not much more to say. And frankly, if my shirt doesn't say it for you, racism is not patriotism. Racism is not your town memories. Racism is racism. And saying offensive things and promoting an offensive mascot is racist and is racist behavior. And you guys, again, I thank you for this whole process. I thank you for listening Four minutes is to up. the same. I thank you for listening to the Ms. same Walsh, points. Please finish. Yes, I thank you for listening to the same points over and over again. And I hope that you will make the decision that is inclusive of every future student in Radnor. Excuse me. Excuse me. Public comment is not rebuttal time. There's a person coming to the podium. Excuse me. No, not during the first public comment, if you'd like to stay for the... So let me explain procedurally, folks. Let me just explain procedurally. Excuse me. Sorry, Mr. Addis, just, just a moment. Excuse me. Excuse me, I'm going to ask the parties in the back of the room to please settle down. This is public comment. Everyone is welcome during this public comment session to come forward and make public comment. We've talked about the policy for that. If there's someone who would like to make a second public comment tonight, at the end of the evening, after we've adjusted our agenda, people are welcome to come forward and, and make a second public comment of the evening. But this is unfortunately not rebuttal time, then, and that's, that's not what this is. Welcome, Mr. Addis. Good evening. My name is Chip Addis, 511 Askin Road in St. David's. <clears throat> I am a 30-year resident and business owner in Radnor Township. All three of my children have now graduated from Radnor schools. The Addis family has been all in, and we have always felt proud to be part of this community and school district. That is until your hasty decision to remove the Raider as the symbol of everything that has been meaningful to us and to the wider Radnor community. It's not just a name, it's a deep culture that you are attempting to erase from the history books. For the Raider community that we have known has always been caring, compassionate, inclusive, truly wonderful people that take care of each other as well as those who are less fortunate. You clearly don't know the same Radnor Raider community that I do. We are not a community of racists as those who align with you have suggested. Their atrocious behavior should carry consequences, specifically removal from the Radnor Hall of Fame.
Now for some facts. The Radnor Raider was not born with feathers. Instead, they were added in the 1960s to honor a beloved teacher and coach. Honorable intentions for the time. But as we learn more, the imagery was gradually removed, which left our, our beloved Raider as the name that was integral to so many generations and could have easily been rebranded. Instead, you chose to take advantage of COVID, hide in your houses, and vote during summer vacation to eliminate it. Sorry to tell you, but that is not an inclusive and transparent process. You have set a terrible example for our youth. And now, to make a bad situation even worse, you allow the name Raptor to be an option for our unsuspecting 14-year-old to 18-year-old children to vote on during a last-minute frenzy in the final days of the school year while the seniors were gone preparing for graduation. I can assure you that these kids and the parents who guide them had no idea that the Latin root of the word raptor is racist when they voted. So now, due to your poor judgment, lack, lack of an, any inclusive process whatsoever, poor leadership, and morally superior attitude, we are on the verge of being known as the Radner Rapers the very name that administration had expressed significant concern about and the rebranding committee voted out two times. I'm not sure how you sleep at night knowing what a mess you have created during a time when all focus should have been on the educational welfare of our children who were suffering due to COVID. You have one final chance to do the right thing and reunite the Radner community. Vote no Four minutes to Raptor. Is up. You always wanted to have you always wanted to have the final say, and now you have it. For if you don't vote no to Raptor, the new Radner symbol that is supposed to unify us will continue to divide us, and you will always be known as the group of people that disregarded the victim, victims of sexual assault and allowed a tarnished symbol to represent us to the world. Mr. Addis, please finish Does up. Raptor really reflect the values and standards of RTSD as one of the six guiding principles of the rebranding committee? Please put your own agenda aside and put the well-being of a community for which you were elected to serve first. Andrew Babson, Lydia Mr. Solomon. Mr. Addis, please I'm finish I'm almost up. finished. Susan Stern. Liz Duffy, Sarah Dunn, Amy Goldman, Bradley Moore, Nancy Monahan, and Jeff Jubilee, please don't turn your backs on us. Vote no to Raptor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Addis. Welcome. Kelly Martin, 771 Conestoga Road. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm asking you all to reject the Raptor name and denounce the faulty process used to arrive at the name. Whether you declare it all a misunderstanding due to COVID and virtual processes, or you all step down and declare yourselves unfit for service, one way or another, the students, the community, and the administration deserve an apology and a fresh start on the rebranding. For the record, and because members of the board and some in the community have committed to lying to our students about the community wanting, um, I want everyone to know that the Radnor Raider was retired, the mascot, in 2013. We have not had a mascot <laughs> since 2013. There was someone screaming here at the microphone just a short time ago about a mascot. Again, in 2013, Radnor retired the mascot. We have since had a circle with an R and two feathers. I don't want to waste your time or the administrator's time, so I want to detail some of the issues that went on with this process and with the committee. But first was the announcement of the conversation back on um, July 7th or July 9th. 
we were told that there was going to be a conversation about the radar imagery. And the majority of the communi community was rallying around retiring the Native American imagery. No one ever mentioned the raider. And you all know that. When you got on that call on September 4th, and you all had 45 minute long explanations for what your decision was going to be about that vote, yet you had never posted a motion. There was no motion attached to that agenda. You decided that night to share it with the public. I'm not sure how many of you were getting together. I don't know if this violates the Sunshine Act or Robert's Rules of Order or whatnot. You decided to get up that night and get rid of Raider without ever giving anyone the opportunity to speak their mind one way or another. I'm going to skip the other issues that went through the committee because clearly you all ignore what happened in the committee. But I want you to know that our family is a Native American family. We have close ties to our tribe. We talk to our chief. We have meetings with them when we go to visit them. And my two daughters are Radnor students. I also went through Radnor. Native Americans are not offended by the word raiders. No one is offended by the word raiders. In multiple calls with the NCAI, they explained that they would be very happy to help Radnor rebrand the raider. We had administrators on the call. I let all of you know about the call. I let you all know that they were happy to help. But the one advice they gave was, please, under no circumstances, add back the feathers, or have a bird if you have the feathers. Radner had the feathers, and now you are hell-bent on having a bird as our mascot, which was the only advice the NCAI gave. And so why do you want to disappoint your community? And then also, are you just giving the middle finger to the NCAI? Do you just think, whatever the NCAI said, I'm going to go against it? Because they are not offended. We are not offended by the word raiders. There is nothing wrong with the word raiders. You need to do what's right and reject the raptor and start rallying around, rebranding the raider, and making things right in Radnor, adding education in, we talked about adding outreach. We need to start doing things to support the Native American community. And you're not doing anything by just getting rid of the raider. Four minutes has expired. Thank you, Ms. Martin. <laughs> Do we have more public comment? <laughs> Hi, Welcome. Good evening. Hi. I'm, Mar I'm Margaret Finley Martin. I live at 232 Barclayton Circle in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania. And I'm here to ask you please to reject the name Raptor. It does not go with Radner. I'm going to echo Mrs. Martin's comments about Native American imagery, I mean, history. My father in law, half Cherokee Indian, very proud of the Radner Raider very proud to be a raider. There's nothing racist about the name raider. We did get rid of the mascot in 2013, and we're R Radnor proud. I grew up in Radnor, family of nine, uh, nine children, the oldest of nine. I raised three of my children here at Radnor. They participated in sports. My daughter was a cheerleader, my two sons football, lacrosse, basketball, everything. They loved Radnor. I want to say thank you, first and foremost, to Nancy Monahan, who stood up against everybody. And that, was, that wasn't an easy thing to do. Liz Duffy and Jeff Dubelier for getting together and wanting to reach a compromise, which is what here in Radnor Township, and I know being the daughter of a Radnor Township builder, Radnor has always had the highest of integrity. You can't grease anybody's hands to get a building permit or anything like that. The history of Radnor Township is one that 
I love, I love. Um, I get emotional. I don't always read what I wrote. Um, but I wanted to say that I begged initially when I heard that this was going to be in letters to the board, could we just have this in person, put it on the back burner, and have it at the Radnor High School Auditorium and social distance where everybody could see how it's affecting our community. So I'm just asking, please, to reconsider letting the Radnor Raider, not the imagery, but just the name Raider. After all, the Oakland Raiders moved from Oakland to Las Vegas, and Randall Cunningham is the chaplain of the Las Vegas Raiders, and they find pride in it. And just what's the wrong? What's wrong with just saying we rush to judgment? That's we're we're only human. We all make mistakes. <laughs> and um, you know, I just it's very near and dear to my heart. And talking to a lot of people in Radnor. It is to them, too. So I'm just asking if we could just pause, take a break, and see, and get back to the way Friday night lights have been since they started the, at the football field. We're going to have a new football field. There's a history of the, of, it was because of cheap metoxin. And my oldest son got that award, and he was very proud of it. And if you look at the award, the actual award still looks like it did initially, originally. So that's all I really want to say. And um, thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Martin. <laughs> Welcome. Evening. Heather Gill, Ivan Avenue. Can you hear me OK? If you asked me what qualities I desire in school board members, I would say members that are invested, engaged, accountable. Sadly, these qualities are not present for several school board members. I long for school board members that are invested and engaged in our kids' education by putting our kids first instead of politics. I long for school board members that are accountable for their actions or lack of response when they sit back, roll their eyes during public comment, or let some community members verbally attack and insult other community members. How does this promote inclusion and equality, which I think we all can agree is desired in our community? I have been watching the school board meetings for the last year or so and honestly taken back by the lack of transparency, communication, and representation of all community members. Why is the school board sensitive to some people who find the word raider offensive, yet disregard the feelings and opinions of others who find the word raptor offensive? Why during a pandemic year when kids had not fully returned to full day in-person education are we even talking about rebranding and raising taxes when the township just received 3.76 million from the government? But most importantly, why does the school board not respond to our public comments during school board meetings? Are we not a team that should work together? Could we all agree that it would be more inclusive and productive if the school board engages with the community by responding to public comment in a fair and even manner? In conclusion, I request that school board respond to public comments so that school board members are invested, engaged, and accountable. I request that the school board put politics aside and listen, truly listen, to all community members to stop division and create inclusion in our community. Disagreeing with others and wanting to have a civil discussion does not make one racist. It makes one an American. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gill. Welcome. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I'm Caroline Stewick. I live on St. David's Avenue. Um, <laughs> perhaps naively, I didn't prepare a speech here tonight. I just sort of um, got in my car and came over because I wanted to take a chance to say thank you to you all. Um, much like Mrs. Berniker, um, we've had nothing but a fabulous experience at Radnor. I moved here with my family six years ago. I have three boys, one who has graduated, 
in college, one who's in the high school, and one who's in middle school. And at one point, we were in the elementary school, middle school, and high school. You can only imagine what it was like to move here with kids that age. Uh, I don't know who was more terrified, probably me. But the one thing that has been so remarkable about this community is how welcoming, warm, inclusive people have been. I know this is a very emotional discussion and has been for a while, but I really appreciate how each and every one of you has taken the time. I have sat at these meetings, I have fallen asleep at these meetings, I have woken up, and you have all been in front of your cameras or in front of your monitors until two o'clock in the morning. I mean, my God, I challenge anybody to do that, honestly. So thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, from my family's heart, I appreciate your time, your energy, and again, I know this is an incredibly emotional thing, I don't envy any of you, but I just appreciate what you've done so far, and also to the administration, um, Mr. Petiti, I look at you over there, I'm sorry, you have read these letters, it's just been remarkable, the time that you've put in, I know you've got small children at home, so thank you. Again, that's it, I just thank you very much. Thank you very much. Julia Pelagatti Bonnenberger, 218 South Aberdeen Avenue. Welcome. Cross Street, Pembroke Avenue, Upland Way. Um, let me just, I could say many things. I just want to thank Nancy for your integrity. Thank you so much for everything. And I want to thank, I want to thank Liz Duffy and I want to thank Jeff because um, it, better late than never. And you listened. And that's what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to read a quote, um, and this quote is from um, a uh, Radnor document, government document, um, and I'll say the quote, maybe someone could, if it sounds familiar, they can say that they said it. Uh, this is from May 5th. In what world do we give the community carte blanche to do all the commenting they want, yet we can't air out our full thoughts on this? We're the deliberative elected body, et cetera. Does anyone want to claim it? <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. That was you. <laughs> and then on May 4th, let's censure public comment, right? No, God help us. And the reply was, must hear it all. Sorry. Does anyone, any of you officials, do you want to claim that one? Well, Lydia can't claim it because she's not here. But Sarah, you replied, sorry. This is the one thing you have to do is listen. And the brilliant, wonderful thing to come out of this pandemic is people are watching you. People have said, oh my god, I had no idea what was going on at the school board. And now they're saying, oh my god, look at everyone texting each other. What's going on there? Oh my god, it's so obvious that they, that they already planned what's going on. Now everyone sees. Now everyone sees what's going on, and it's such a shame. I will tell you, as you know, and I tell everyone, I moved to the school district. I moved here from a very good school district to raise my children. I raised two of them. And the third one, I had to pull out of Radnor because of what you did. Shame on you all. Shame on you all. I hope you feel the ramifications of what you've done to this community in November. Thank you, Ms. Bonnenberger. Welcome. Thank you. Mike Lake, Woodley Road in Bryn Mawr. At one time or another, I believe most of you have either said or supported the notion that killing the Radnor Raider is the right thing to do. If killing the Radnor Raider is the right thing to do, this board wouldn't find the need to try and sneak it through during a pandemic while parents and taxpayers had bigger worries like toilet paper. If killing the Radnor Raider was the right thing to do, it would have happened quickly and with full community support. Yet here we are months later with this board continuously shoving Raptor down everyone's throat until we burp feathers. If killing the Radnor Raider is the right thing to do, this new mascot chosen for us by you, dear leaders, wouldn't have feathers. If killing the Radnor Raider is the right thing to do, Board President Storen wouldn't have had to feel the need to smear residents, taxpayers, and students who dare question the ever-changing and murky rebranding process 
as January 6th Capitol rioters. If killing the Radnor Raider is the right thing to do, the 1,200 plus signatures demanding Susan Stern's resignation from this board over said comments wouldn't have been ignored and brushed aside by other school board members. You care more about each other than you do the students. If killing the Radnor Raider is the right thing to do, board members, many with law degrees, would have recused themselves from the rebranding committee rather than embed themselves like ticks. Destroying something you neither own nor created gives you zero say in its replacement. You, mere, you are merely caretakers of this institution. Time to start acting like it. If killing the Radnor Raider is the right thing to do, high school teachers wouldn't find the need to verbally bully and block students from leaving the classroom to participate in a school-sanctioned Radnor rally. <laughs> the school board wouldn't need to provide cover for these re-educators and then under-report rally participation numbers to the media. If my kid was in one of those classrooms, my calls wouldn't have been to the superintendent, they would have been to the fire chief, the police chief, and the mainline times. If killing the Radnor Raider is the right thing to do, where's the renaming committee for Wayne Elementary? Surely we can't have a school named after a slaveholder. <laughs> if killing the Radnor was the right thing to do, this board would provide an accurate upfront cost estimate to rename, reuniform, and repaint everything Raider, and not try to bury just the tip of the $1.5 million iceberg under maintenance, then suggest parents will offer to repaint for free. Please, which weekends have you volunteered? No, killing the, I'm sorry, if killing the Radnor Raider is the right thing to do, this school board, by pulling strings through a bogus rebranding committee, wouldn't need to keep secretly reintroducing Raptor over and over again every time it gets voted out and changing the rules as you go along until students become disenfranchised and just give up. We get it, board members. You love Raptor. However, there are few things in life more shameful than misleading the children. You owe this entire community, and especially the student members of the rebranding committee, a massive apology. <laughs> Yet all we heard from you is, we could have done a better job. A better job at what? Not getting caught for putting the fix in? Stop creating dumpster fires and asking us to raise taxes to, pit, to put them out. How about a compromise? The rapist, I'm um, sorry, the Raptors becomes the official mascot of the Radnor Township School Board. As a taxpayer and a parent, this has my full support. I'll even buy you all sweatshirts. Four minutes is up. Unfortunately, these sweatshirts won't be coming from Elaine Paul Schaefer's husband's company. I'm sorry, I had no idea you would quietly signed an exclusive five-year no-bid contract with them. Why the long faces? Don't want to be called Radnor Rapists? Well, neither do we. My name is uh, George Hobson. I live uh, in Wild Haven Road in Rosemont. Uh, I've been a resident uh, for 75 years <coughs> and had the pleasure of going to Radnor, as did my father, my brother, my sister, um, all kinds of family members. And now I have my grandchildren there, uh, two left. I, in all the years I've been in Radnor, since I've been born, I've never felt the divide that this community has at this time. Never. It was just, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful township which has, and I'm just speaking from the heart, I have nothing written. It just has been so negative for, for at least me and a lot of my friends. But I did want to clarify a couple things tonight. It was stated earlier much earlier that the Metoxin family was against uh, the Raider. That's false. Two members are, but one isn't. Tim Metoxin is a good friend of mine, 
and the son of Chief Metoxin, who was my coach for two years in the 50s. I played with Tim, and I'm still in correspondence with him. We spoke several times about this issue, and he said, I have no problem with, with a Raider, because I am a Raider, and my father was a Raider. He did have issues with the imagery, which we all did, and I believe it was seven years ago, I'm not sure of the exact time, that the imagery was removed. When I coached here, we had, yes, we had an R on our helmet. At time, we did have an Indian. Uh, most of the time, we'd, we'd have an R, we, were, we would have nothing. We never thought of it the way it is today. And I understand that, times have changed. And I do agree, and you all did, I think the community did the right thing seven years ago, taking the imagery away. But it has nothing to do, and someone said this, uh, as far as a, a mascot, you don't need a mascot. Uh, it, it, we, we, we never had one. I, we never had one in the, that I recall in the, when my brother played in the 50s and I played in the 60s and my son played in the 70s and 80s. There, I don't recall a mascot. Uh, I'm just here to ask you to reconsider your thinking. I, this was a very fouled procedure uh, this year. I, I, I just don't want to get into it. And I'm, and I'm very, very upset because I do love Radnor. I love the, the community. Uh, and one last thing I want you to know that I did try, and maybe they didn't get my uh, met, uh, email or what, what have you, reach out to a couple of colleagues that were on the other side to talk about this and to compromise, and I, I got no response, zero, uh, which was disappointing. Um, with that, I hope you all will just really think about the alumni, all the previous kids that have, have not even just graduated, they don't have to play a sport, and reconsider and keep the name Raider. You've already gotten rid of the imagery. The Raider is, has nothing to do, nothing to do with Native Americans. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hobson. Welcome. Good evening. Maya Van Rossum, 716 South Roberts Road in Bryn Mawr. And I do want to apologize for the side conversation in the back, but I will not apologize for standing up against threatening behavior towards my daughter and towards my family. Um, and I would like to thank you. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Moore. I'd like to thank you, Mr. Babson. I'd like to thank you, Ms. Goldman. I'd like to thank you, President Stern. I'd like to thank you, Ms. Dunn, for thinking about the students, for thinking about the community, for thinking about alumni, and for thinking about Radner's standing in our world and the place and the space that we will hold in history and in the memory of all. I'd like to th thank the board for standing for a decision that best serves all members of our community and that ensures that Radnor is a leader in showing respect for all people. Change can be hard, but not the kind of change that we're talking about tonight. The kind of change that we're talking about tonight is positive change, respectful change. It's about showing kindness and courtesy and respect and care for all people. That's, I'm proud, I am proud that Radner is looking to take this positive path. One that makes clear that racist behavior, whether it was intentional or unintentional, has no home here in Radnor. You undertook an open, inclusive, respectful process to choose a new name and to choose a new mascot. People participated, people were heard frequently, and you made a good decision, and you should be proud of that. I'm proud of you for making that decision, and I'm proud of you for continuing to listen, but to stand by the right outcome. Frankly, I think that the abusive behavior that we've seen here tonight, the, the abusive behavior that we see on social media, the threats, the attacks, the property damage that certainly my family and others have experienced, 
by those who would like to see the Raider name continued demonstrates why, I mean, it perfectly exemplifies why it is so important that tonight this process come to an end, come to the proper conclusion where you as a board vote to support the vote of the students, to vote to support the actual majority of the community that would like to see respectful change. And the respectful change that's on the table is the Radnor Raptor name and associated imagery. The imagery that's going to be developed, which is going to be fun. Leadership can be hard, right? Doing the right thing can be hard. I'm really proud of you for demonstrating leadership and doing the right thing, despite the fact that it is so hard. You, the Radnor School Board, the majority of the Radnor School Board, again, School Board Member Dunn, President Stern, School Board Member Goldman, Babson, and more. You have done the right thing, and you have done it well, and you have done, done it respectfully. I urge you to conclude the process tonight by supporting the majority of the community, by supporting the majority of the students, and vote for Radnor Raptor and associated imagery. Thank you. Welcome. Alex Yiannopoulos, 15 Braxton Road. I uh, looked out in the room tonight. I was hoping to see uh, Mr. Midget, who I saw up on the uh, screen retiring. I've had him as my physical education teacher when I was in kindergarten back in 1997. I, um, I didn't see him tonight. I did look out and I did see a member of the community who I disagree with on this issue, but who stood shoulder to shoulder with me when a member of my own party was uh, had committed some really unspeakable acts, an elected official on a different board that represents Radnor. I saw a school board member who's a member of a different party who's no longer on the school board anymore, who I think did an absolutely fantastic job when she was on the school board for all those years. And um, I think it's safe to say we disagree a lot about national politics, but I really respect the work she did while she served our community. Um, I saw some members of the community who have communicated with me on social media for the most part pretty respectfully, even though we disagree on this issue. So a school board member who I have a disagreement with about this issue who, thank you, did respond when I emailed them. And um, I think that a lot of the people I just mentioned are not going to be happy to hear that I am uh, going to ask that you, yes, do take the vote for to adopt a new mascot. And I hope that that's OK, that we can disagree about that issue. I, um, I would, the only other sort of remark I'll have about the Raider is I know there's been um, some different commentary about who represents the majority of the township. And it ultimately, that you know, is, you know, this is an elected position. I know we all wish that politics had nothing to do with it, but it is an elected position. And the voters have had one opportunity to express their opinion since this has all started. We did have a primary election. And the top three vote getters did all vote to retire the Raider name, and the top vote getter also was the loudest voice on the board supporting the name that the students eventually chose. So I will leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yiannopoulos. Welcome. Hi, David Wood, 716 South Roberts Road in Bryn Mawr. Um, I have been here in different uh, different positions in the past, but I'm here tonight to speak as a community member, not as a faculty member. Um, I just want to make that clear from the start. There have been some things said tonight about my colleagues, which- Mr. Wood, did you give your address? I'm yes, so sorry. 716 Thank South you. Roberts Road. Um, that have been said about my colleagues that um, I, I hope that the administration, I'm sure Mr. Stitzel will do a, a good job in investigating them, and I think he probably already has, and I think they've been they've been discovered to be unfounded. Uh, but, you know, people can think what they want. I've heard a lot of a lot tonight about not dividing our community. 
but what I've seen a lot of tonight is people purposely trying to d divide our community. People out there cheering for something and booing for other things, getting in people. It just isn't, is, it, it's not how you bring a community together. What brings a community together is moving forward tonight and getting this done. I have a lot of history. I've heard a lot about people tonight and their history in the community. I go back as far as anyone. Um, my grandfather was on the school board, a Radnor, Radnor student. My, my father was on a Radnor student. All my, all my siblings were Radnor students. All my kids have been Radnor students. My wife was a Radnor student and a member of the Hall of Fame. While the Hall of Fame may remove her at some point, that's up to them, clearly. Um, and speaking of being divisive, I can't think of something more divisive than to ask a member of our Hall of Fame to be removed. That seems like a kind of a divisive act. But um, I know tonight we're trying to be inclusive. Uh, I would also like to address some of the things that have been said um, that are just factually not correct. The vote of 992 for the Raider was not a vote. And I think you can correct me if I'm wrong. It was not a vote. It was a survey which I didn't submit anything to because the, the name and imagery had been discontinued. I didn't have any suggestions about possible new imagery and names, so I didn't suggest anything. I didn't join the rebranding committee because I thought I was a divisive figure and I shouldn't be on the rebranding committee. I had understood that it was, it was gone. Um, and I just wanna make that clear that, that that was not a vote of the community. Um, the second thing I want to address is that everybody's talking about the mascot and the imagery being gone in 2013. It seems like our maintenance crew had to remove the Indian head from the side of the building this year, 2020, sorry, not 2021. Um, and so for though it's been, we've had more than feathers, it's occurred there. Um, and so just to say that it's, it's gone, you also have to look at the the, the voice of a lot of people that are now supporting R were the voices of people that supported Raider without the imagery. Were people that supported Raider with the imagery, as time went on, they progressed in their thinking. As, as everybody has the right to do, and certainly I've progressed in my thinking, people have posted on social media a picture of me in a, a Radnor ice hockey jacket with a, a Native American head on my, on my chest. That picture is not fake, it's a real picture of me. Since, since that point, my, uh, my thinking has evolved, and that's something that we can all do. I, there's no reason why we can't evolve. There's no reason why we can't expect our students to evolve. The idea, too, that, that um, our students aren't bright, I'm back there with Ellie Davis, and Ellie Davis has been attacked repeatedly on social media, and we're talking about protecting our students and doing what's right, and what I see a lot of here is we're protecting our alumni and we're not protecting our current students. I had a student on the day of the Raider rally, and by the way, as far as I know, there wasn't a single staff member that, that did not let students go out and attend. They read what Four we were minutes supposed to read. I apologize. We, were, we read what we were supposed to read, and uh, that was it. I actually had a student who was in support leave their stuff in my room. I had no problem with that. They're, they're doing the right thing. Please um, finish up, Mr. So, Boyd. Yeah. Thank and you. I just, wanna, I just wanna clear up some points that were made in the past, and I hope tonight that you just vote for this and let's move forward. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Wood. Welcome. Hi, I'm Amanda Castilleja at West Wayne Avenue. Um, as a mother of two Radnor alumni and a member of the rebranding committee, and also as a woman that I asked that the school board vote no to the name Raider. The entire movement to remove our over 80 year old traditional Raider name and rename our school has been driven by a handful of activists and a few school board members, which has been corrupt from day one. And I will not apologize for using the word corrupt. This is exactly what is going on, dishonestly in return for personal gain. The name Raptor was voted off multiple times by the rebranding committee along with committee members, administration even expressed their own concerns regarding the relation to rape. It was not the top choice during the community survey. It does not meet the guiding principles, criteria that was given to us by the administration, hence the multiple votes to remove it. Why does it keep coming back? And who is approving this override? 
the administration nor the school board has provided an answer to this question. This is where con corruption comes into play. If not, please explain otherwise. As taxpayers, we deserve an answer. It is very upsetting. <laughs> it's very upsetting to see the push for Raptor and have the linkage to rape be completely ignored. As a woman who has personally experienced sexual abuse, and this, this is very offensive, this name should not even be in a final vote. The vote of this name would show a lack of morals. Sorry. The remove, you remove the Raider name, which is certainly not racist or offensive. It has no relationship to race at all. And I'm a Native American Indian of the Cherokee tribe in Oklahoma, and it's not racist. It has no, it has a replay, and you replace it with Raptor, which has a meaning linked to rape. This is both harmful and offensive and completely hypocritical behavior shown by the school board. From the very beginning, if you were so concerned with offending Native American in, images, Americans, therefore, where is the true moral changes from the school board? Where are the changes to educate our students and community about Native American Indians? Where are the workshops to educate our students? Where are the internships to get our students involved in Native American Indian reservations? Do these exist in Radnor? Please correct me if, it, if they do exist. As a school board, if you cared about our students and community, you would be doing this instead of renaming our school. Your past actions as a school board have shown that you do not have the student's best interest in mind. This is an opportunity for you to make things right, put our children first, put their education first, and heal this community. Vote no to the Raptor name and pause this entire process. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Castilla. Is there more public comment? Mr. Petiti, do you have any written? Oh, I'm sorry. Good evening, Mr. Sherry. Welcome. Dan Sherry, Atlee. Welcome. You think? I have to tell you, Ms. Stern, the environment here tonight under your leadership as president of the Radnor School Board seems the antithesis of welcoming. I'm not gonna be speaking tonight about the name change. Okay? I'm a believer that if evolving standards of decency that you genuinely believe compel you to act, you act. And you deal with the political consequences that may fall. That being said, I don't think anybody up here on this board can claim that the way that this process played out is anything other than a failure. What do I base that on? Well, Linda Stein's recent article, or at least one of the directors up here mentioned that they took issue with how the process played out, but also with the four incumbents that are running for re-election this year. That would be among other people, you, Ms. Stern. In the mailer that went out, it's still available on the Radnor Dem Democratic Party's website, there are nine star-pointed reasons as to why the incumbent should be reelected. Some of them date back in time, back to 2015. How many of them, more of a rhetorical question for the audience, deal with the name change, despite the fact that it occurred in 2020? I'll tell you, zero. zero, not one. So even if you thought that you had the moral imperative to act, and I won't second guess you on that, you're not happy with how this played out. The community is not happy with how this process played out on both sides of the aisle. They're at each other's throats at this, in this audience tonight, and it's unfortunate to see. This board, cannot think that it is rhetorically persuasive enough to change minds philosophically about something involving cultural sensitivity or racial sensitivity or cultural appropriation. You're not that rhetorically gifted. I don't know anybody who is. But what you can do 
is engage in a process where people actually believe that you're paying attention to what they say and that you're responsive. Now, I look back, I look back to try to find an example of the Radnor School Board dealing with an issue that was this energized. And I'm not at all in equating with moving a building with cultural and racial sensitivity. I'm not, but it's the only example I can come up with where in this township, we dealt with an issue where the community was very worked up, and that was the moving of the Radnor Middle School, the keep it in Wayne, versus move it elsewhere. Now, at that time that those votes were occurring, this board was dominated by a political party, just as it is now, but it was a different political party. And you know what this community had back then? We had questions and answers between the community and the board. And the board answered questions. You didn't just have somebody spouting off four minutes, four minutes, four minutes. There are people up on this board that can engage in a debate, actually do prepare for meetings. I know Director Moore. Went to high school with Director Moore. He's smart. He can talk. He's another PR expert on this board. Nevertheless, per your policy, which is your choice to keep it this policy, the board is not responsive in these meetings. So when I heard that a four minutes has director, expired. Oh, look at that example. Okay, <laughs> almost like somebody timed it with their speech to have that happen. When I heard that somebody said, oh, well, you know, maybe this was not a good process, this board is dominated by a political party. You can change the process back to which it, which it was and actually engage with the public, answer their questions, to lower the temperature, assuming you felt you had the moral imperative to act. You haven't made that change. Why haven't you made that Mr. change? Mr. Sherry, please finish is up. Because, is it because there are certain people up here who would rather engage with the public by saying, your time is up, or to have a policy that says this board traditionally does not engage with the public? It does engage with the public. It's just you all that don't engage with the public. Mr. Sherry, please finish up. Prepare for meetings. Answer the questions of your constituents in real time. And if you won't do it, if you lack the courage to do it, if you're too timid to do it, don't be surprised if you get replaced with people who commit that they will do it. And I end with that. Thank That's you. It. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Batiti, could you read the public comment, please? Sure. Preston Tyrell, 21 Oak Foot Road, Wayne. The school district's website has the results of the voting of the mascot. Raptor came out on top, at least that is the spin. Of the 1,500 or so students eligible to vote, a slim majority of victory went to Raptors. The way I look at the numbers, one third of the students did not vote. This is because they did not like the options. In addition, the voting was held at the end of the school year, the last day for seniors, many of whom had handed in their school devices. Many families also pulled students during a few days to start on much family needed vacations. But was it the general feeling of voter suppression by the board? Voter suppression that will make a Texas Republican proud. In a highly informal survey that I conducted, the students that voted for Raptor, some thought they were voting for a dinosaur, some a bird, and others had no idea that it was a mascot. They thought it was just a name. The school district's own promotional YouTube video posted on June 13th to inform the students of the options shows both a bird and a dinosaur. What exactly are they voting for? One could take the results of the voting to be R for Radnor 436, Raptors the birds, 276, Raptors the, di the dinosaurs, 276. As a side note, if this was a vote for the new mascot for both middle school and high school, why didn't the other middle school students get a chance to vote? The same video also echoed what school board member Sarah Dunn stated, that each elementary school could also be a bird of prey. Why did the voting not go below the eighth grade? Members of the rebranding committee have said that the committee shot down the name Raptor several times, yet it kept coming back to the list. They have also reported that a member of the administration suggested the name Raptor. I find it funny in an effort to get rid of the offending feather from the old logo, we are moving forward with birds who have feathers. The real win winner here is confusion, as we have no idea what went on during those meetings. Your own video is not even sure what is going on and in the fact that many of the noisemakers on most sides of this argument do not live in Radnor. I urge the board to stop the process and put the question on the ballot. Let the taxpayers of Radnor decide what happens in Radnor. 
the entire process has brought nothing but turmoil to our town. And the, winner, and the winner is not Radnor, not the students, not the taxpayers. Ted Mandes, Radnor High School alumni, class of 1966. My name is Ted Mandes, class of 66. My parents, 32. Aunts and uncles, various years. Keeping the Radnor name is important on so many levels. But for many decades, thousands of Radnor students and alumni have had a common name. One, one that instilled pride, loyalty, and a sense of community. No matter one's race or ethnicity, we were all Raiders. We competed shoulder to shoulder on the field or on the court to win for the school, our teammates, and to prove ourselves, prove to ourselves that we could achieve our personal goals when faced with diversity or division. Now this board has decided without any community consultation to change the name by which we, the alumni, the present student body, and the community at large are connected. So once again, we will stand shoulder to shoulder to fight to win. How this plays out, whether through a non-sustainable financial burden on the community where millions of dollars are to be misspent, or that your choice of a new Raptor name comes under fire for its underlying meanings, or that you have just overreached thinking that you are the Radnor Pi Pilot Bureau. We are in this for the long haul, and you will find out at the ballot box that you are not. Jennifer Carter, 205 St. David's Court, Wayne. My family has lived in Radnor for 20 years. In my history of being a member of this community, this year has been the most divisive I have experienced. In fact, I always felt Radnor was an inclusive, open-minded community that cared about the voices of everyone until this year. The process of deciding on a new mascot name during a global pandemic was disgraceful and to claim otherwise is irresponsible. The voices of the community were silenced by a few and the end result is absurd. Shoving their name Raptor through as the winner is condescending and a fabricated result that is politically motivated. The fact that Raptor is derived from the Latin word repere, which means to seize, and that this word is tied to abuse against women, would indicate that the board's vote on this new name mascot should be unanimous no. To vote otherwise seems hypocritical and morally wrong for a board that claims to be fighting for victims. As a woman, I am offended by a name that is derived from a word that implies hateful, abusive acts towards women. Aren't you? Our community needs something that will bring us together, and the Raptor is not the answer. I don't want my tax funds spent to rebrand with a name and mascot that does not represent the entire Raptor community and has extremely negative connotations. Time to stop the madness and put this decision on hold until a fair and democratic process is implemented. A vote that includes all stakeholders is the only way to achieve a result that will embra be embraced by all. It's time to do the right thing. Marie Stemple. Uh, 39 Longwood Drive, Mr. Wayne. Petiti, what was that name? I'm sorry. M Marie Di Diamantino Stemple. Thank you. I that. But, um, 39 Longwood Drive, Wayne. I'm asking you to vote no to the selection of Raptor as a new nickname for Radnor High School and Radnor Middle School. My primary reason is that, like a great number of other alumni, community members, and students, there is nothing offensive with the name Raider. The board arbitrarily eliminated the name Raider from student voting, even though when the board asked for public suggestions, the name Raider came out on top. The board's process in, in this entire rebranding initiative was deceptive, manipulative, and offensive to more people than you know. Furthermore, the name Raptor, which is the only name of choice, only choice of a name you allow the students to vote, R is not a name, is truly offensive, having derived from the Latin word rapire, meaning rape. I'm sure the board members are aware of this, but have chosen to ignore it. It has been almost a year since the haggling over rebranding and the board's determination to eliminate Radner's longstanding Raider nickname has taken place. A year when the focus story in the COVID pandemic should have been about the welfare of the students, but rather the board chose to create a distraction, rebranding. My personal opinion is that there are many sheep on this board, and that a few of you decided that rebranding would bring you notoriety, and it has, but the unfavorable kind. Renner has become somewhat of a joke thanks to the TV and newspaper outlets that have given much time to this human interest story, and in a laughable way, rather than acknowledging the greatness of Renner School's academics and other noteworthy, noteworthy accomplishments of its students. I ask again you to vote no to the adoption of Raptor as a new Renner School's nickname. Anne-Marie Jones, 224 South Aberdeen Avenue, Wayne. My family and I would like to thank you for all of your hard work and dedication throughout this extremely challenging school year. We acknowledge that the multitude of decisions you've needed to make for the good of the entire school community haven't been easy, but feel they've been made with careful consideration and grace. We wish, we wish you a wonderful and restorative summer. Kate Hart, 520 Meadowbrook Circle, Wayne. Hello, my name is Kate Hart. I live at 520 Meadowbrook Circle, Wayne, PA. I'm writing 
tonight to ask you not to approve the name Raptor as a nickname for Renner High School and Renner Middle School. Words have many definitions. The word Raider is defined as a fast, lightly armed ship. It is not linked to anything remotely related to race or is racist. Yet you listen to the small handful of community members last summer that claimed the name Raider was racist and removed the name during your vote in September. The word Raptor, however, is linked to the Latin word repare. An article in the Journal of Raptor Research states the word Raptor or Raptor in a Middle English spelling to use up to CA 1500 CE descends from Classical Latin 75 BCE to 3 CE early to Middle Roman Empire Citroni 2006 specifically from the verb repio infinitive repere to plunder rob ravish abduct Oxford English Dictionary online 2016a forming the root in linguistics lexeme the smallest meaningful lexical unit of the noun raptor is rap which in turn ultimately provided the source for many other English words as nouns, e.g. rapture, adjectives, e.g. rapt and rapid, and verbs, e.g. in rapture, ravish, and rape. Tonight I am presenting you with a letter I wrote that is signed by almost 300 community members asking you to vote no to the raptor name because of its linkage to the word rape. Even if there are other definitions for the word raptor, it would be fiscally irresponsible for you to approve this name and spend taxpayers' dollars to rebrand us to this name, since so many people in our community are offended by it. By our logic, if a handful of citizens are offended by the Raider and force you to remove that name, a group of almost 300 residents can similarly ask you to remove the Raptor name. Tonight you need to put your personal politics aside and act as the leaders that you are elected to be. Vote no to the Raptor name and spare this community another rebranding in the future. Below is the letter our community has signed. Dear members of the Radnor Township School Board, we're writing to ask you to vote no to the name Raptor as a new nickname for Ranner High School and Ranner Middle School. This name is connected to the Latin word rapire, which is the root of the word rape. Surely you can understand how this name would offend people, especially those in our community that are victims of sexual assault. Choosing this name would mean that you are not taking these victims' feelings into consideration and will potentially result in another costly rebranding project in the future. A name which is connected to rape will be a blemish on the Ratter reputation, resulting in mockery by others. A member of your administration voiced concerns over adopting this name since he confirmed with an RHS Latin teacher that it was indeed related to the word rape. He noted that other schools in our area had dealt with sexual assault problems, and this may not be a positive connotation. An English teacher at RHS commented on social media that, quote, it's not wrong to note the shared lineage with rape, unquote. Why would you then choose this name for our children's schools? Clearly, there is only one way to vote tonight. Vote no to the Raptor and show that you support the men, women, children, and sexual assault survivors that are offended by this name. Do not link us to the word rape. Do not make us Radnor and Raptors. Names of signers and their comments are attached to this email for your consideration. Carrie Nielsen, 233 Callanan a Avenue, Garrett Hill. Go Raptors. Aaron Dunkel, 401 Maplewood Avenue, Wayne. I am not coming to publicly comment on the mascot name change because it is an inevitability rather than open for discussion. It is completely ridiculous that we could not just change the image and keep the name. I do not, I do not agree with this wokeness in my school district. Patricia Bader, 614 Kirsch Avenue, Wayne. Good evening, Radnor Township School Board. I am writing to request for you to take a pause in the rebranding process. There are many reasons why I, why, why, and I believe that you already have heard many of them. One, we are in the midst of a global pandemic and trying to get school reopened in August 2020 when the decision was made by the school board. Two, cost of rebranding. Three, process just doesn't seem legitimate. There will always be two sides for every issue that is voted on. There will always be a side that doesn't win. But what I do not like is that is what I have heard from some of the high school students in the past two weeks. Here is what I have heard some of the students say. One, quote, I did not vote because the whole process was just too confusing. Two, quote, seniors did not vote because they could not find it on Schoology and they were busy with graduation that week. Three, quote, if I vote for the Raider, I am a racist. How have we gone, quote, unquote, how have we gone from worrying about offending the Native Americans to allowing people to call other people racist? Four, quote, I did not vote because my vote won't count. The school board is just going to make their decision. They overruled the first survey that was taken when 900 plus out of 1,300 people voted to keep the Raider name, unquote. The school board now has students to assuming their voice doesn't count. Our local government is teaching the students, some young adults, with voting rights that their vote doesn't count. Shame on you. 
In regards to the budget, I cannot believe that the projected budget for rebranding is in the bar, all, ballpark of 157000 After doing a search online, it is estimated the cost of rebranding is between 800000 to $1 million. I realize that our athletic field infrastructure project most likely has the rebranding factored into this, but I still believe that your estimate is very low. Will our taxes be raised? Do you believe that this is a fair to families that have suffered through the pandemic? I have to agree with Nancy Monahan when she stated in the finance meeting on June 22nd, quote, passing the budget will be financially irresponsible, unquote. Now more than ever, we need to be financially responsible. I'd also like to point out that the RHS administration and staff did a great job in getting our children through a horrible year. In no way was guiding the students through a global pandemic part of their job description. Should having to deal with the added stress of an angry, divided community have been a part of it either? Absolutely not. The only priority should have been the health and safety of and academics of the students. Thank you to Dr. Bachelor, Ms. Kevgis, and staff. In closing, I would just like to ask, can the school board please give the community a time to regroup and work together in rebranding the mascot? Please do not move forward with this process until we can come to some type of agreement or compromise. Thank you for your time. Call, call Rosen, um, resident of Overhill Road and teacher at Renner High School. As a teacher of English, observing the conversations going on around the nicknames and mascots, I am pleased to notice an interest in close reading among our neighbors. It bodes well for my discipline if people are excited about actively examining language and image. Unfortunately, not all the analysis I see and hear bears up under critical consideration. People have been proclaiming alarm about the students' vote for the name Raptor, arguing that because that word has the same Latin root as the word for a grotesque crime, it should be considered inappropriate. Raptor was not my choice of a name, but I don't agree that it is prob problematic. What social scientists call, quote, motivated reasoning, unquote, may be at work, because we are human. If I don't like something, say a political candidate, I may be more likely to cherry pick information about them to reinforce my view. For instance, if I associate the name Raider with victories and happy events, I may be quite naturally disinclined to value contrasting positions as much as my own. As far as I can tell, People who liked and continue to like the name Raider don't do so out of hatred. They do so out of personal attachment. Raptor will never have that attachment for them, and I respect that. The new name will be fine for everyone who comes along now, though. When I moved here 23 years ago, I had no previous attachment with the name Raider. It didn't take close reading for me to make my initial assessment. A Raider is a plunderer, and the idea of matching it with an Indian image repulsed me, given what we know about history and how it was the Indians who were displaced and dispossessed. I never, had any, I never had any attachment to Raider because I always found it distasteful. I don't hold any animosity against people who do love it, though. It had become part of who they are. A disinterested audience should find nothing particularly distasteful about Raptor. It's just not what we're used to. A Raptor, in, which, in whichever image Radnor ultimately selects, is identified by the natural predatory action of an eagle or dinosaur or even the front half of the mythical griffin. Yes, it's violent, but nature is red in tooth and claw as the poet wrote. There's nothing sexual about it. There's not even anything human about it, which should be a good thing. I googled the Toronto Raptors basketball team in several ways to see if there were significant complaints when they adopted the name in the mid-1990s, not that long ago, and didn't see any. It's unfortunate that the derogatory connection to the name has arisen because we are in town campaigning to make people think of it. I'm sad to hear that people are distressed. I will be sad to hear that someone with trauma in their past now may think negatively of Raptor because of the campaign to disparage it. A plain text reading doesn't support that, but the human brain is full of powerful forces, as we know. I appreciate the conversations we've been having about etymology and imagery and the close reading of texts. It is healthy for a community to read and listen carefully and to consider a variety of positions. Some among us will keep their Raider gear and wear it. Nobody is taking that away. In fact, it occurred to me that it might make sense to auction off those old uniforms that have, that have the old name and image because some people love it, and the revenue from the auction can help defray the costs of the changeover. In any case, I'm pleased that we are moving on. Even, even if we don't all agree on Raider and Raptor, we can, all, we can and will agree on Radnor. Rick Eckstein, 334 Strathmore Drive, Brimmar. Good evening. I would like to address agenda items 5.01 to 04, as well as item 8.01. First, congratulations and thanks to all the retiring teachers and staff for their many years of dedicated service to our kids. 
Likewise, congratulations to Avery Barber, Ellie Davis, and Sebastian Caper for giving their valuable time to represent students on our school board committees. Perhaps their spirit of public service will be inspirational rather than, rather than a target of mockery. Finally, double congratulations to the RHS lacrosse teams for their state championships. I contend that the community will be proud of you and other teams regardless of your nickname. Speaking of which, I hope the board moves quickly to adopt the district's new nickname. Raptors were certainly not among my top choices, but since neither I, I nor my grandparents attended RHS, I really shouldn't have any say in the matter, or so some of my neighbors contend. Regardless of my opinion, Raptors seems to be the strong preference of current 8th to 12th grade students, and these are the voices that should count most. According to data posted by the district website, Raptors was favored over the capital letter R by 12 percentage points, 56% to 44%, among all eligible student voters. The 8th graders' landslide, landslide margin of 61% to 31% seems very telling since these younger students will be directly engaged in the schools longer than any other voting class. The remarkable 68% response rate among all eligible voters indicates the results are very reliable, meaning that if we did an another vote, it would get very similar results. I implore the board and community members to keep this issue of reliability in mind when some people offer the results of a poll purported to show huge public support for keeping the Raiders' nickname. It's just because something is called a poll or a survey does not mean its results are meaningful. Perhaps Mr. Delaney's statistics class can use these events as a case study. As a member of the now dissolved district rebranding committee, I want to thank the board and administration for at least trying to make our pathway to a new nickname and new imagery more inclusive than it had to be. There is nothing in Title 24 of the Pennsylvania statutes that cedes school district decision making to grassroots committees or popular referenda. But I am pleading with the board and the administration to not write off similar committees in the future just because the rebranding committee often seems dysfunctional. I participated in a similar committee a few years ago when people, it, the people of very different persuasions argued mightily and then pounded out a consensus on how the high school athletics program could be more rewarding for students, parents, and coaches. Many of the suggestions coming from that committee became policy and are still in place today. Perhaps some of my neighbors should think about other issues besides nicknames that they feel strongly about and would like to weigh in on before irreparably damaging their current and future credibility within the district. And please stop bullying current high school students on social media. It is truly pathetic. Thank you for your time. I have a couple coming in in the email here. Mr. Petitio, you finished with public comment? I have a couple that I have to read from the email. So I have another eight, looks like. Dear Renner School Board and Renner Administration, excuse me, this is Andy and Stevie Bolden, 120 Browning Lane, Bryn Mawr. Dear Renner School Board and Administration, we are sending in our comments as we may not be able to attend the meeting tonight. As lifelong residents and current parents of Radnor students, we are asking the board to not approve the Raptor name for Radnor schools. Please pause this process immediately. Time and taxpayer money is being wasted. The divisiveness caused throughout the school district by six members of the board specifically is unacceptable. To the six members of the board, you are not listening to the community in which you are supposed to be representing. Over the course of all the meetings regarding the rebranding process, the dismissive and sometimes patronizing demeanor demonstrated by six members of the board has been both astonishing and disappointing. Only 36% of the current students support the name Raptor. There's a split in this support between a dinosaur and a bird, so the percentage is lower for either option. Either Raptor option should be reflected as the lowest total in the poll. Not knowing if Raptor was a dinosaur or a bird is due to yet another rushed voting process. The name Raptor was rejected by the rebranding committee several times due to it not meeting the principles that were established for the process. Raptor has upset many in the community for its origin of rape. That, de that definition in itself should absolutely remove Raptor as an option for rebranding. Regarding the other 64% of the students, over half or a third of the student body did not vote. Many have expressed this out of protest to the process. Others have said they believe the voices do not matter, so what is the point? It is a sad day when the actions by our school board and school administration have resulted in our students feeling pathet apathetic towards democracy and fairness. This should make us all stop in our tracks. The initial argument presented to retire the Raider was that it was considered non-inclusive and racist. Both points have been repeatedly debunked with facts from current Raider residents who are Native Americans, the National Congress of American Indians, 
as well as minorities within the Raider community, have also spoken up in support for the name Raider. According to a couple of surveys conducted this year, Raider seems to be embraced by a large number of the students and Raider Township residents. It was disclosed in one school board meeting that the NCAI is willing to work with the school district to rebrand Raider, as well as provide educational programming to the Raider community on Native American culture. We do not understand when the six members of the board will turn their backs on the people in which it claims it wants to respect and support. Again, please pause rebranding immediately before wasting any more time and money to a current and clearly failed process. This whole situation needs to be reevaluated. Thank you. Kristen Kearns, 221 Walnut Avenue, Wayne. For over 90 years, the Radnor Raider has represented community of respect, integrity, and tradition in this township. To the majority of the residents in Radnor, we've, come pr we've been proud of these attributes that we have come, and that have come with Raider pride. If you were a board that was in touch with the majority of constituents, you would understand that. But it's painfully clear to us that you have your own agenda and are ignoring the majority to pursue your agenda. However, as much as you've tried to tear the Raider community apart with this frivolous initiative, you've managed to bring the Raider community together to defend our tradition and keep the Raider in Radnor. We will always be the Radnor Raiders. Uh, Rachel, Rachel Skolak Lowe, 517 Askin Road, Wayne. Dear Board, on behalf of my family, thank you for following through on your commitment to retire the Raider mascot and nickname. Additionally, I wish to thank Dr. Bachelor and all of the district administrators, faculty, and staff who contributed to the rebranding process. Congratulations to everyone for making this happen during a very difficult year. It means a lot of many, it means a lot of many to many students and their families. The students have voted and Raptors definitively won. My family and I look forward to cheering on the Radnor Raptors. Have a wonderful summer. Joanne Martin, alumni class of 1990, 2434 St. Dennis Lane, Habertown. Please reject the Raptor, do the right thing for the community, and table the entire rebranding process for now. Steve Helmetag, uh, proud alumnus, 2630 Benbrook Drive in Michigan. It is my understanding that students recently voted to name Raptors over the R. I cannot understand how either of these choices are an improvement to our community. While the R is innocent enough and should not offend anybody, the Raptor name is a significant concern to me. Why was Raptors even a consideration? I thought that it was voted out by the committee formed to determine which name choices would advance. Also, there is a lot of negative connotation with this choice. Raptors should not be identified with, identified with rapists. Why do so few students choose to vote? It is my understanding that a lot of students abstain because they prefer the Raider name or do not agree that a rebrand ingredient their school with a different identify is necessary or wanted. Why are we apparently changing the school nickname based on 500 some students in a community of tens of thousands of stakeholders? There was a recent vote where 992 people, an overwhelming majority, chose Raider as a name they most prefer for Radner's mascot. The Raptor name was voted for by less than 50 people in this same poll. Finally, were the students who chose to vote given an impression of what the Raptor mascot would represent and look like? It seems unfair for someone to choose between an R, which is pretty specific, or a Raptor without representation of appearance. Since the Raptor name had been rejected more multiple times, why was it not made clear to the voters what the Raptor would look like? I hope that the school board is wise enough and strong enough to postpone the official endorsement of their mascot name. Cassandra Kennedy, 1057 Eagle Road, Wayne. Good evening. As school board members, you should be apolitical. However, your actions have proven to be opposite. This current school board has members who are openly supporting critical race theory and denouncing Christianity on social media, PTO members helping with DEI initiatives. This is not okay. America was not founded to continue slavery. In teaching children they are privileged or the oppressor due to their skin tone is unacceptable. As is teaching people of color, they are oppressed because of their skin tone. How can students, parents, and teachers in this district feel supported with school board and PTO members like this? There's a teacher at RMS who gave out a privileged aptitude test and factually incorrect parliamentary debate questions regarding the Bill of Rights. Then there are West teachers pushing agendas that support defunding police. When students know their teacher's political beliefs, they are not teaching. This is unfair to students and should outrage parents. While Radnor may claim they do not have knowledge of critical race theory being taught in their schools, they do have a DEI program, which is in inevitably the same. I know many are here tonight to speak about the Raider, so I will leave you with this. Z Van Fleet, a fellow mother, said the following, 
quote, during the Chinese Cultural Revolution, I witnessed students and teachers turn against each other. We changed school names to be politically correct. We were taught to denounce our heritage, unquote. Parents, they came for your raider. Next is the nuclear family, causing a division with children and parents. Vote them out. Carolyn Eckstein, class of 2018, 1517 Grand Avenue in St. Paul, Minnesota. Hello all, I am commenting tonight to bring light to the sad reality that has befallen our district, specifically regarding the way that many members of the community are behaving with their discourse about the Raider. I have been following the rebranding effort throughout this past year and have noticed that the tone of things has taken a turn for the worse. Instead of, instead of engaging in respectful and calm discourse, many people instead prefer using ad hominem attacks and political name calling. This is making the rebranding process all the more difficult and should not be tolerated any further. The most prolific disrespect, co disrespectful comments have been regarding the school board. I will be using direct quotes here, mostly from Facebook, and note that I have corrected some spelling mistakes to make this easier to understand. I also will not be linking these quotes to people specifically, as I don't want to embarrass anyone. Anyway, rather than respecting, respectfully stating their disagreement with the decisions of the board, instead, many community members have resorted to name-calling, quote, a board of ineffective asses, unquote, quote, the hacks raising their hands here, unquote, quote, this incredibly egotistical, stubborn, and out-of-touch board, unquote, quote, nothing short of an absolute disgrace and embarrassment, unquote. The list goes on. They also lash out at the brave students of radical reform who spearheaded the rebranding effort, calling them, quote, evil, quote, vile, quote, stupid, quote, cancel culture crybabies, and telling them to, quote, take a long walk up a short pier. I think it's incredibly inappropriate to treat these kids this way. It really shows the lengths some people are willing to go to in order to push their agenda. I myself have been subject to such personal attacks and name calling, along with members of my family. I was called, quote, spoiled and self-absorbed, quote, a girl that peaked at 20, quote, pathetic, quote, a 20-something brat, and, quote, a spoiled brat internet troll, after I attempted to engage with the supposedly mature members of our community. I was told to, quote, keep my bratty mouth shut, and to, quote, sit down and shut my mouth by numerous adults, and to, quote, get the hell out of our country, unquote. It seems impossible to truly engage with the people behaving this way and have constructive conversations. Finally, I'd like to call attention to the politicization of the discourse surrounding the rebranding. Many people seem very concerned that the school board and RTSD teachers have un unnecessarily politicized the issue and are pushing their personal political agendas onto the students and the, and the community. This is evident in such comments as, quote, I remember when Ranner was once a Republican majority. When did the snowflake, snowflake cancel culture take over, unquote. And, quote, you libtards are the worst that's, are the worst. That's all I got to say. Unquote. And, quote, there's no reasoning why these people, they live on planet Mars. That's why their cities and states are in so much turmoil, unquote. These are the same individual. These same individuals are comparing the rebranding process to, quote, Nazi Germany and claiming that there is, quote, no, no such thing as systemic racism. These claims are both baseless and tasteless and add nothing but spite to the conversation. To conclude, I am extremely embarrassed on behalf of Radner and the way things have transpired. I hope this does not reflect the majority of our community, as I know Ranner is composed of mostly decent and respectful folks who will not stoop to such lows. I urge everyone participating in the rebranding effort to take care in how they engage with others, as we are all deserving of respect. I myself will, will be more mindful in the future of how I am speaking to people that I don't agree with. I think our community can learn from this period of turmoil and unrest and come out stronger and wiser than we were before. Thank you for your time. Ben Hart, Rising Senior, Manor High School. This is Ben Hart, Rising Senior. I was a member of the Branding Committee. I just want to say a quick thank you for wasting my time and disenfranchising my voice as a Radner student. Ever since this board came to be, I have not once felt represented or feel as if your actions were in my best interest. If anything, they were blatantly against what my peers and I would back and I would back and support. Once again, thank you for making a sham out of my time and students' voices. The biggest lesson I learned through all of this is that democracy doesn't seem to matter. This lesson probably isn't the best to teach a rising generation of students you claim to support and instill Radner's values in. My classmates and I deserve better. Our community was never this divided before. Please change your mind and rethink the Raptor.
graduate of 87. You likely won't read or respond, as that has been your track record anyway, but here it goes again. My name is Catherine Muzino, and I live at 46 Berkeley Road, Devon, and I am a graduate from the class of 87. I attended Radnor from kindergarten at Eithen with Betty Niles as my first teacher, finishing 12th grade at RHS with, with one of many legendary teachers, being Don McKinney. My parents still reside in Radnor, and we have a history here similar to the Raider name. As alumni, I am asking the school board to reject the Raptor and start this name change and how it will be funded pro fund the process over, and this time with due diligence, community input, and complete transparency. In my opinion, from the start of this name change, the entire procedure was flawed and tainted, and the funds required for this process seems to have been miscalculated. It's not hard to find the documentation that decisions were made without proper procedures. There have been obvious mistakes and misrepresentation. The decisions that have been made against the Raider name without transparent community and alumni input is embarrassing. In fact, alumni input was not properly notified for their input. Once I researched this, it all seemed the board was very secretive, quiet, and the group that decided the Raider name had to go twisted words, backpedaled when they were confronted, and even more embarrassing, they went about their quest unfairly, not rad or proud. To finish, there is no question the mascot needs to change. However, changing the name Raiders is costly, unnecessary, and a waste of time. Put it on the ballot with all the projected options, cost the taxpayers history and accurate information. In saying this, I'll add that you will lose alumni involvement in, in donations going forward if this isn't done properly. Again, the opposite of rad or proud. Bridget Kelly, class of 83, 421 Virginia Avenue, Phoenixville. Keep the Raider for the Radnor Raiders. Do not accept this cancel culture. Raptor sounds like a mean dinosaur. Thank you. Ann Whitney, 83 Radnor Grad, 112 Woodland Avenue, Wayne, PA. Dear Radnor Board of Commissioners, I'm sending this brief email to communicate my strong disapproval of the name Raptor as a new representation for Radnor Schools. The root meaning of Raptor makes it unquestionably a bad choice. Um, I have an email here from Ms. Kelly Martin, but I believe she gave us comment. She already. gave comment, yes. Okay, so. um, I have Jay Bowden, Rainer High School, 1982. Uh, dear Rainer School Board members, I disagree with the choice of the name Radnor Raptors. It could be misconstrued into inappropriate slurs and does not represent our school district. And that's all. Thank you, Mr. Petiti. All righty, we are going to get underway with committee reports, and uh, Ms. Solomon is not here to give the curriculum committee report. Dr. Babson, were you going to give that report tonight? Yep. Thank you. Okay. So the curriculum committee met on Tuesday, June 15th at 5. Board action items included acceptance of grants, gifts, and donations from the REF, approval of contracts for Right at School, Professional Learning Services, Freckle and Star 360 subscriptions, approval of the 520.1 template for the 2022 school year, approval of the Dreer and Crescent scholarships, ratification of an overnight trip for the PIA track championships, a number of textbook adoptions, and approval of a student club at RHS. The approval of the ARP ESSER Health and Safety Plan was also an action item. This document was reviewed by our solicitor's office, complies with all requirements put upon RTSD by the CDC, PA Department of Health and Governor's Office, and the CCHD. This plan also permits administration to add layered mitigation strategies as necessary. Presentations for the night included an update of cyber options for the 2021-22 school year by Mr. Bechtold, Dr. Dukiewicz and Dr. Hand, and an MTSS presentation by Dr. Dukiewicz, Dr. Kearney, and Mr. Regal. As stated in the presentation, the K-12 cyber option set forth will not impact the 2021-22 budget as they will draw from ESSER funds and the technology and curriculum special projects accounts. This plan is fiscally responsible and sets up RTSD on a path for future success and provides the flexibility necessary for students and families. Thank you. And now our Finance Committee report. Mr. Moore. We covered financial action items in last week's June 22nd special meeting to discuss the budget. We anticipate that the next Finance Committee meeting will be August 10th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Policy Committee report. Ms. Goldman. The Policy Committee met on June 8th at 5 o'clock. 
in addition to the approval of the May 4, 2021 committee meeting minutes, the following eight policies were moved to the full board for official action at tonight's business meeting. Up for a first reading is starts with policy 835, electronic signatures and records. This policy was identified for a review in light of the increased use of electronic signatures and records since the onset of the pandemic. The policy includes guidelines for the use and acceptance of electronic signatures and records, as well as electronic record keeping requirements for compliance with state and federal laws and regulations. Also up for first reading is policy 805, currently titled emergency evacuation of schools. This policy was identified as one that was outdated and required revision. The policy was revised to address aspects of emergency preparedness and response, such as emergency and security drills required by the school code, school safety and security assessments, emergency planning, and related education and training. Note the title change. It is proposed that the title of this policy be changed to emergency preparedness and response to reflect the scope of the revised policy. These are policies up for a second reading tonight. Policy 218.4, discipline of student convicted or adjudicated delinquent of sexual assault. This is a new policy that was drafted to comply with the provisions of Pennsylvania Act 110 of 2020. Policy 200, enrollment in district. This policy and administrative regulation were selected for review in order to ensure consistency with policy 218.4 and more specifically to ensure that the parental registration statement required at enrollment as contemplated in policy 218.4 was properly reflected in policy 200. And policy 209, health examinations and screening, screenings. This policy and administrative regulation were selected for review revision in order to incorporate the requirements of Pennsylvania Act 122 of 2020. Act 122 amended various school code provisions regarding vision screenings and examinations of students. And last but not least, the policies for first reading for repeal. Policy 909, municipal government relations. Policy 912, relations with educational institutions. Policy 914, relations with intermediate unit. All three of these policies were identified as PSBA template policies that were adopted in 2008 and are not legally required or necessary. Repeal of these policies will have no impact on current operations and will help consolidate and streamline the district policy manual. The policy committee will meet again on Tuesday, August 10th. And uh, the facilities committee report, I apologize, I skipped Ms. Uh, Dunn. Just briefly, uh, the facilities committee met on Tuesday, June 15th, uh, virtually, and we had two items on our agenda, but the meeting before ours went really long, so we tried to keep it short. Uh, the first one, we were dis we discussed the um, proposed contract with uh, the Radnor Aquatic Swim Club to, to lease use of our pool, but given that the pool opening is uncertain right now and with all the construction on campus, we put that on hold until we had um, more ability to actually provide them with information about availability. Uh, the second item that we spent much more time on was uh, updates about the project at the high school and given the hour tonight um, I would just suggest that people who are interested in seeing that uh, view the YouTube video of that meeting. Thank you and now Government Relations and Communications Committee Dr. Batson. Sure quick report here uh, we met on Tuesday June 8th at 7 Mr. Petiti provided legislative updates on school property tax, COVID relief, charter school legislation, and right to know laws concerning vexatious requesters. Mr. Petiti then gave a detailed update on our website redesign project, and we have not yet scheduled uh, another meeting, but we should probably meet in August. Thanks. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, we are now moving into our priority discussion action item, and the first item is 8.01, which is approval of the student nickname logo selection. The recommended action is that the board approve and adopt the student selection of the Raptor nickname logo for Radnor High School and Radnor Middle School. And I will entertain a, a motion and a second. A motion from Dr. Babson and a second from Ms. Goldman. Um, just, I think you have a presentation, yes? Mr. Bechtel, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm Dan Bechtel, Director of Secondary Teaching and Learning, and I have Mr. Michael Petiti, our Communications Director, with me. 
we have served as co-chairs for the rebranding project. Tonight we plan to briefly cover the purpose and guiding principles of the project, provide an overview of the timeline and milestones, explain the results of the student selection process, provide information about the new nickname selected by our student body, review the costs as discussed during the Finance Committee meeting, and discuss the next steps in the project. As with all projects, it's important to begin with a clear purpose of the project. This project's purpose was to select a new nickname logo for Radnor High School, which will also be adopted by Radnor Middle School. Likewise, it was important to establish from the start what the criteria of a new nickname must have. Setting these six guiding principles for the new nickname at the project's inception was a hope to establish common ground for the analysis of the many new nickname suggestions we received. The six guiding principles were also to act as a lens to assist the committee and administration in narrowing down the options. The six principles were align with the school colors of maroon and white and translate to identifiable branding, exude positive qualities, promote school pride and generate excitement, honor around our history and traditions, reflect the values and standards of our township school district, and represent all stakeholders. To briefly recap the timeline and milestones for this project, in August, the board heard community feedback and in September made the decision to retire both the Radnor High School mascot and nickname. In January, a plan was presented to the board for selecting a new nickname. In February, administration chose 40 committee members from a pool of 140 applicant, uh, applicants. This committee was assembled to provide feedback throughout the process and was comprised of stakeholders with varying viewpoints and backgrounds. The committee met throughout the spring and community focus groups were held to solicit feedback on possible nickname options. In early May, the board met to hear pu public comment on the past nickname and reaffirmed the removal of the Raider nickname. Since that time, students were surveyed to provide input on potential nicknames. The rebranding committee met twice to discuss the final nickname options, and students voted on the semifinalists and finalists. This slide here is attempting to help us to explain how the, we reached Raptors. We started with uh, 96 suggestions submitted by the community through a survey, I should say through a, a submissions process, where 1,315 submissions were received. Those 96 suggestions were narrowed to 57, which were brought to the committee. R, was ra R for Radnor was subsequently added back to round one after committee discussion to bring the total for round one to 57. The committee administration were able to reduce the 87 to eight for review by community and alumni focus groups and for student feedback. Those eight were Dragons, Griffins, Hawks, R for Radnor, Phoenix, Rain Frogs, Raptors, and Ruckus. In surveys provided to the focus groups and students in 8th eighth to 12th eighth to grades, participants were requested to rank each of the eight remaining names on a scale of one to five in relation to how closely each name adhered to the six guiding principles mentioned earlier. One was no association to the principles, and five was a strongest association. This quantitative data, as well as qualitative feedback provided in the survey's comment sections, helped to reduce the eight, eight options to a final four for two rounds of student voting. Those final four were Griffins, R for Radnor, Raptors, and Ruckus. On June 11th, students in grade... Excuse me, Ms. Stern, could you require the public to be quiet so we can hear them? We're, excuse me. Excuse me. We're in the middle of a presentation from our um, administration, and I would kindly ask the audience to respect that. On June 11th, the students in grades 8 to 12 voted on the final four in the first round of student voting, with the top two vote getters moving on to the final two. R for Radnor with 38% of the vote, and Raptors with 34.9% of the vote. A video was shown to the students to ex explain Radnor Raptors and the Radnor R prior to the vote on June 14th. You can view that video on our YouTube channel. I'll turn it over to Mr. Bechtel. When, uh, when the student body was presented with the final two choices, students in grades 8 through 12 were given the opportunity to vote and select Raptors 
over R for Radner by a 55 to 44 percent margin. And you can see the breakdown of votes by grade listed in the chart. The selection of the Raptors nickname will result in Radnor High School and Radnor Middle School depicted as a bird of prey in their logo. This could be an owl, hawk, eagle, etc. Radnor has ties to Raptors already in that Ithan is currently represented by an eagle and Radnor High School has had an owl in the school crest since the 1930s. The name Raptors was in the top three for the highest number of submissions for the initial nickname suggestion phase back in February and March. It was the highest scoring top eight option among students when the student body was surveyed in May. Raptors had 228 students that uh, selected it as their uh, one of top two choices. Ruckus followed with 147. R for Radner had 134 and Griffith had 101. Again, this was when we selected, when we solicited feedback for the top eight options from the students in May. Raptors earned the second highest number of votes in the semifinals and the highest number of votes from our students in the finals. Throughout the process, the nickname Raptors has garnered significant positive feedback from our student body. Regarding concerns that were brought forward about the Raptor etymology, as co-chair, I was the person who brought the concern to the committee about the Latin root based on feedback from stakeholders in the community. In the meeting, Radnor High School students who were taking Latin pushed back about concerns related to the word origin. As former principal of Radnor High School, I always respected it when students respectfully push back and advocate for something they believe in. Subsequent to our meeting, I took the time to meet with our high school Latin teacher to further discuss the origins for the term Raptor in detail. After our discussion, and discussion internally among the administrative team, we do not hold concerns with the term Raptor in association with the root repere. That root has provided many different terms that we use in the English language as listed on the slide. Rapid, rapture, ravage, raven, ravenous, ravine, reap, and surreptitious all have the same root as raptor. No one has issues with the NBA team, the Toronto Raptors. The Audubon Society and other organizations dedicated to ornithology clearly have established raptors as an appropriate name for a bird of prey. Raptors was the choice of our student body. Throughout the process, our kids thought highly of this nickname. Griffin, R for Radner, Raptors, and Ruckus all had a fair shot with our students. The student body voted and they chose Raptors to represent them. Now on a parallel track to the process of selecting a new nickname was the identification of the instances of the past nickname and imagery at RHS and RMS and the development and implementation of a plan to remove and or replace these instances. District administration reviewed these instances publicly at two committee meetings, government relations and communications on April 13th and two weeks ago at finance where associated costs were also provided. Total, total estimated cost at this time of addressing the currently identified instances as reported on the 15th is $157,985. The chart you see on this slide is from that finance committee meeting. We've added the highlights to help uh, better explain the information in the chart. First, the highlights in yellow indicate instances of Native American imagery located at RHS and RMS, which currently constitute about 73% of all the located instances for a replacement cost of 123525 Of course, these instances would need to be addressed regardless of the school's nickname. Secondly, we've located nine instances of just the name Raiders, or about 27% for a replacement cost of $34,460. We then move to the instances that did not make this chart 
because they have been or will be addressed according to normal operating procedures or budgeting. For example, RHS uniforms have been on a replacement cycle for years. Players wear them for four years, and then new uniforms are purchased going into year five. If a team's uniforms were up for replacement on the cycle, heading into the upcoming school year already, and they have already been budgeted for, they are thus not a, quote, rebranding cost. For example, football was on the cycle for replacement in 21-22. New uniforms would have been ordered, regardless of rebranding. Additionally, football helmets are reconditioned every year. This reconditioning includes the removal and reaffixing of the logo sticker. The stickers cost about $2.50 each, and about 100 are typically ordered. For years, the district has annually budgeted for and purchased new shirts and other necessary clothing for coaches. For years, certain athletic clothing and gear has not been purchased by the district because players keep the clothing or the gear and they wear it out of season. For example, these items include the baseball hats, golf shirts, bathing suits, lacrosse helmets, which the players keep to wear year-round when participating in club and out-of-season leagues. With this information as background, we are now ready to move to the next steps of this project pending board approval. We reached out to Varsity Brands, the firm that will be designing our new logo at no cost, to let them know we have reached the logo design phase of this project, again pending board approval. We will follow up with Varsity to officially get this design process started, should the board approve the new nickname tonight. We are prepared to order new uniforms, as outlined in the previous chart. We will also continue to address the instances of the past imagery and nickname. Thank you. Thank you both very much, and thank you for the time. I know this has been a, a lot of extra hours, um, and I really both acknowledge and appreciate you and the work that you've done very, very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. you did it with integrity, and I know that it was not an easy, an easy lift. And I know that you know the way our board voted created more work for you this year. And I, I own and acknowledge that, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All righty. With that, um, I don't know if we have any board discussion. Um, if there's any comments, I don't know if anyone. Ms. Stern, I had a quick question, actually. Sure. Um, and I think, Mr. Battiti, you seemed really well prepared, so you probably have the answer to this. And I, I appreciate you giving an explanation of the operating, the normal uh, progress of needing to make changes, because I know that was a, a comment that's come through the board in some emails. Um, so it was helpful to understand that the football uniforms were up for replacement this year. Can you just clarify, and I know we're talking about $250, so it's not a lot of money, but just because people are really focused on this, and I appreciate that. When you say the football helmets need to be reconditioned, are the stickers removed and put back on, or are new stickers replaced, purchased anyway? It would seem to me when they're removed, they probably aren't reusable. Yes, yeah, so in speaking to um, our athletic director, Mr. Friel, I learned that either the stickers in some way are addressed, either they're removed to, to recondition the helmets, um, and a new sticker is put on, or a new sticker is placed over top of the previous sticker once the helmets are reconditioned. So, but I, either way, because it's the, because of the reconditioning, that we would be purchasing new stickers for the football helmets. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes, Ms. Monahan. Um, I, I just want to make make a couple of comments. Um, uh, to be, I mean, the last couple of weeks, I've truly struggled with the decision that is to be made tonight, personally. Um, for those that have followed this, I've been pretty clear on my position and the issues I've had since the vote. And the process has moved forward with the four names and then the final two names. Um, I personally liked R, for I thought that it uh, was something that we already had equity in. And I believed it would give us all time for emotions to settle without the introduction of a new name or a mascot. However, the Raptor name won with 56% of the students' votes with 68% of the student body. And that has been really hard for me to understand that and that the students voted on this. And we've said from the very beginning 
that we need to listen to the students. And let's put our faith in the students to select a name. Um, the student vote clearly preferred the Raptor over the R. I preferred the R, but as a board member, um, you know, I wanted to explain my position hasn't changed. However, I need to defer to the student voice. Um, in, in final con, and I know that doesn't please a lot of people that are sitting here tonight. Um, I do have a couple of final comments that I feel extremely strongly about. Uh, for one, there can be no shaming of anyone who chooses to wear their Raider gear. Um, Raider has been here for 90 years. We have taken pride in being a Raider. And it's just unfortunate that a few public comments have stigmatized the name. Um, I don't think that should be. Um, secondly, we need to celebrate our Raider history. Um, the board has unanimously supported a Sphere Gallery as part of the Accessibility and Wellness Project. And I hope that we can continue to work with community members and alumni members who have already put in a lot of time for this to realize this important addition to memorialize Raider's history. Because we're not trying to erase our Raider history. We want to celebrate it and memorialize it. Um, so that I, I wanted to share kind of what you'll see with the vote and an explanation as to my, my thinking. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I do want to clarify, there was a comment made earlier tonight um, intimating that the rebranding company is owned by some member of the community. And I, I do want to say that that, I, that information is not accurate. Um, there is a community member whose husband owns a, a different company that's done some uh, uniform work with us. But the branding company that we're working with tonight, to, to my knowledge, Ms. Stern, we don't Excuse engage me, in we conversation. We don't take comment from the floor, but if you'd like to send me an email clarifying that, but it, excuse, I'm going to finish my statement now. What I'm saying is, to my knowledge, I'm going to finish my I'm going to finish my statement that I was going to make, and what the statement I wanted to make is that, to my knowledge, there is no connection between any member of the community and. The, com the, the rebranding company that we hired. Now, even if there were, that's not actually a problem. But I, I, you know, to my knowledge, there isn't one. But if someone wants to send me an air email and we can clarify that, that's fine. But that still isn't actually a problem. We have community members who own businesses in Radnor. In terms of the comment about, um, about interacting with the public, I, I understand that it's a frustrating process to sit in the public. I sat in the public for years. And I actually felt a very similar frustration. Why isn't there a dialogue back and forth? And then I worked to get elected. And I, and I learned that, in fact, this is what governance is. The public, co the public comment, the public comment is people's opportunity. The public comment session is the people's opportunity to provide you know, comment to the board. The emails that we receive individually, excuse me, I'm going to finish my sentence. The emails that we receive daily, weekly, hourly, that we've offered to have all nine board members, to my knowledge, I know eight for sure, and I think the ninth, she's just not here to confirm or you know, say one way or the other. We have all offered, and in fact have had, individual conversations, and we've offered to have individual conversations vote, with anybody and during the month of August we had those conversations Mrs. Stern if the in, public's but, not going to respect me, this our so meeting. to end my comment I do want to say I wanted to clarify about the company that was my information if there's something different someone should absolutely send us an email clarifying it it can be clarified at another public meeting but it doesn't actually mean it's a problem this board voted publicly to use a particular company. We're allowed to do that. That is, in fact, our job is to vote for these things in the public. So that, I, that is all I want to say about that right now. I do want to defer the floor back to anybody um, who wanted to make a comment about the motion on the floor. 
Is there any further comment about the, the motion on the floor? Mr. Jubilee, did you raise your hand? Point of order. Excuse me. Point of order. Yes. I, I can't. I can't. Uh, thank you. I, Mr. Moore, because of the um, dividers, I couldn't see who was speaking. I, I'd like to raise a point of order. Sure. Thank when you. is the next public comment time on the agenda? Um, at the end of the meeting, I believe. After the uh, at the end of the meeting, we have additional public comment. I think at the end of the uh, nineteen point oh one, I believe. Yes, nineteen point oh one. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other comment on the vote, yes. Mr. Jubilee? Uh, I'll I'll respond um, to that. And I don't I didn't prepare. I was writing notes. I, I am I'm very sensitive to to what was shared tonight and over the last pretty much year. I'm I'm open book. Folks who've watched this for the last nine months, folks who I've had conversations with in the community, people who have supported retaining the Raider name, people who have opposed uh, retaining the Raider name, they know I've pivoted. I've pivoted. I have friends on both sides. This is hell for me. I'm not. I can't speak to others, but I do know they have integrity. You don't. I know many don't believe that. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. So, so I don't want to just be silent because people are going to, like Ms. Monahan, you know, she explained her direction. And I think I have some, some common things to say, but I want to explain, and it's not going to make everybody happy. And that's the nature of this beast. I don't particularly like the name, the winning name, but what I do like is I the student's agency in making its decision. Now, I know there's arguments to be made about how that process worked, and I, I had problems with the process. I shared that, and it was in public, and it was reported in the media. I don't back away from that. I still believe that. What I also believe is that the administration, I wasn't part of the rebranding committee, but I believe in Mr. Bechtold, I believe in Mr. Petiti, and I believe they tried their very best and were tried to be as transparent, as upfront as possible, and I know others disagree with that. I know that. I believe in their integrity, I have faith in them, and I have confidence. I also know that you could call me a waffler. I don't care. I'm human. Unfallible. Make votes that I, I'll stand up and support. I'll make votes that I admitted maybe weren't, you know, the right vote given some more information that I learned at the time. I tried with other board members to find a middle ground. We spent a lot of time. I felt I felt comfortable that my fellow board members gave us the opportunity to state what we felt. We tried and we lost. I don't begrudge. They had the right to vote the way they did. We didn't win. I, I, I wanted to, to have a compromise, and we didn't win. And so I, I, I moved on. Um, I'm not going to vote against the students. I, I, I may not like how it all went down. Maybe, you know, maybe you can vote me out. <laughs> OK, two years. I mean, we're volunteers. So it, it's, we make decisions for many different reasons. I can't speak for others. If, if I think if we all decided that we wanted to get, you know, harangued and from both sides, not just one side, and be verbally abused, both sides, not just one side, that why would we have gone through this? So it, it's, it's not like we, we wanted to become enemy number one. Um, and you don't, I understand, you don't have to like it. Many don't have to like it. Many will, you will support it. And you have a right to do what you want to do. Petitions. Legal, if, if there's legal action, I don't know. You absolutely have a voice at the ballot box. Respect it, totally respect it. But I didn't want to not speak. And if I, I make some upset, I respect that, I understand, but I wanted to know where I was coming from. Thank you. Is there any other comment? I'll, I'll make one as well, um, because I was part of that motion. 
And, um, you know, I'm going to say, first, I really echo what Nancy Monahan said, um, and, and Jeff, and um, Mr. Jubilier, sorry. And, um, but I guess, you know, I'm going to go to, I respect that the vote didn't go my way when we put that motion on the table. I respect it, and because I know that I've worked with my fellow board members, and I know how much integrity went into this. Despite, you know, you may not think that way, but but I know how much thought went into it. And you know, something just struck me tonight that I have to share. One of the one of the comments and public comments. So we are listening. I promise, we've listened uh, uh, to everyone. Um, but one of the comments that struck me. And it was someone who had advocated strongly since September for the Raider name. He said, the community needs a name that can bring the community together. The community needs a name that can bring the community together. So all the people advocating for Raider, do you think that brings the community together? If you know, I mean, that was really where my first vote in September was about. Was, was that I was listening as a board member, I listened to everyone's perspective. I was a proud Raider because I, you know, I, I have kids who were captains of teams, class presidents, all the things that I've heard some of you claim. I, I have four children and we, you know, but I became aware of people who didn't feel that way, that didn't feel the same pride. That doesn't mean that I want to take any pride and I totally echo what Nancy, Monaghan said that I don't want to ever shame anyone for the Raider name. Because uh, never, you know, uh, and so we are, we are, we are evolving. And I think back to the beginning of this meeting. Think of all the, I was so proud. I mean, we talked about a school year that we, we had, you know, the administration and the teachers did so much to move mountains. Parents, I mean, I'm looking at someone right now who was part of a committee that pulled off an amazing prom for our kids and a carnival and gave tirelessly. Just amazing what she has volunteered and other parents have volunteered. We really pulled off an amazing end of this year. And I was so, I'm thinking about like cheering on this Phenomenal accomplishment that two lacrosse teams won a state championship. How great was that? I mean, I was on a high at the beginning of this meeting. And it was all about Radnor pride and, and, and Radnor and, and being Radnor. And we had teachers and administrators who have just given so much to this district that retired that we were so, you know, that, that thank goodness they, they chose that as a profession. And then it turns. And I want to just remember what made us so proud at the beginning of this meeting. It's Radner. You know, personally, I wanted the R too. I wanted the R because I wanted to take a big break. I just wanted a sigh. I didn't want an R because I wanted to bring back the Raider at a different time. Right, but, but guys, but guys, right, right. But no, I, but guys, wait, I'm not. You guys, I mean, listen, I, I'm speaking to you, the people who are sitting in this room. Okay. Please, please let Miss Duffy finish her comments. They were, they were at graduate. Ladies and okay. gentlemen, please okay. let, me just, let Miss Duffy okay. finish okay. her comments. Just, so that's completely unacceptable. Fellow board members, okay. please let so, Miss Duffy finish so, her comments. But I had wanted, but again, it's not about what I want. It's about what the students voted for. And trust me, and but it is, and, and we had, and I don't want to go over the number, but we had essentially, I'm going to be rough, okay, R rough numbers. We had essentially a quarter of the kids not vote, okay, a quarter. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, a third of the kids did not vote, but we had almost 68 kids on any marketing metric, I mean 68%. That's, that's considered a really strong response rate, 68%, okay. And I just want to say, in terms of like, an, I, I was curious on, a, on a, a student election, how many people vote on a student election, you know, at the school. And essentially, guess what? About in the 70s, about 
75. So a quarter of the kids don't vote on a student government election. So these numbers are not that far about the people who just, you know, don't participate. They don't vote. They don't care, right? But other people, no, but they don't. So, but we've had, it's a strong, it's a strong percentage that voted. We have a strong, like there, and the kids, and Raptor won decisively. So, so I get, again, I'm going to, I'm going to side with the kids. They voted and it, we need to, but, but guys, we are Radnor. I mean, we are, and the one thing that, the one thing that I would ask, the one thing that I would ask, that I would just ask to the brand, the people charged with this branding, um, the branding agency, that if we could just at least consider, strongly consider our current, the equity that's in our current R. And I say that because, you know, we have, we've adopted that R in the middle school for quite some time. We, we have it on all sorts of gear now, our block R with the diagonal and sometimes just a block R. We have flags out there that people are proudly, proudly flying. We had the big R on our Prevost turf field before we pulled it up and, and to me, I would just ask that we consider building off of that equity and, and keeping that so that we can, you know, for people who are experiencing loss or for people who want something that is tied to the past, that we still, we, you know, Raptors is R too. So Raiders is R. You know, we, the, the, just that we, we consider just building off of that equity in, in whatever imagery we move forward with. But that's all. I mean, I am going to vote yes. And, um, but I, I just, I just hope, um, I just hope we can come together and and um, and focus really truly on what 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 the beginning of our celebration tonight was about, and that's about being, you know, Radnor proud. Yes, Mr. Moore. There were a lot of questions about how how the Raider name can be harmful. Uh, not to rehash, I would listen again to the August 4th comment and the public comment at the April 27th meeting. I, I would listen again. Um, and for my views about what the right compromise and pass fo the right path forward is, based on everything we heard and, and can't unhear from all of those meetings, you know, I, I, I've expressed that basically in our May 11th meeting. I had a lot of questions and uh, nothing came out of that meeting to upend the process that the administration had said, and they've come forward with their recommendation about uh, what the best path forward is for our community and for our students. And, and the administration knows how to come forward and say this isn't the best, best path forward, um, given that the Raiders was retired in September. They, they know how to come forward and say, you know, take a pause. They know how to say this isn't what we recommend. Um, and that's not what we heard tonight. Uh, so I won't rehash my previous reasons for my September vote um, or my May 11th vote. Uh, the one new thing I want to address is, you know, there was, there was the opportunity for board members to sit on the rebranding committee, um, and I declined that invitation. And the, and the reason is because it's not about me. Um, I, I was a Raider, uh, and I always will be a Raider. I was class of 96, and, and no one can take away my past and, and what I was or who I was. Um, this decision isn't about who I was or who I am. Uh, this decision is about what's the best path forward for, for our districts, for our community, and for our students. And so I voted, voted based on that, and, and I stand by my vote. As for the question of you know, the, new, the new nickname that is, uh, has been proposed to us uh, from this process, uh, the question, you know, is, is it harmful? I'd refer to the public comment that was read at 9.54 p.m. tonight. I think that um, is a persuasive public comment, and I'd urge anyone listening to wonder if you still have questions. Community brings forward questions. Is this, is this harmful moving forward? I would, I would listen to that public comment again. Um, I don't hear the Air Force proposing to rename the F-22, um, and um, I think we can move forward with confidence because of that as well. Uh, so we've heard the administration's recommendation. Um, you always have a voice, and I will always listen.
person and some issues are fraught and it is impossible to come to a compromise that everyone is satisfied with. The compromise I articulated and prefer um, was the one I articulated in our April GRCC meeting, what Ms. Monahan also articulated tonight. It wasn't her choice for a compromise, but it's, you know, we recognize our past, we don't erase it, um, but we also move forward with something, something new. And that's where I stand as, I, and I agree with, with Mrs. Duffy. We are Radnor. I don't know when or how this healing will occur, how quickly, how slowly, steps forward, step back, but I still believe in Radnor. I still believe in Radnor, and I'm not giving up on Radnor. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, I, um, Mrs. Stern, can I call the vote, please? No, I actually, I actually had a comp. Oh, well, I'm I guess sorry. You, oh, no, legally, Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Kristofko, when a member of when the board calls the vote, what's the remind me of the procedure? It's my error. We haven't we haven't so actually I, I proposed the resolution yet. Yeah, the um, uh, the we do. I'm sorry. We have a motion and a second. Right. Mr. There's, there's been a motion and a second, and uh, when somebody calls for the vote after a, a period of time, it's up to the board chair to determine whether um, a board comment and discussion should be closed to, to call the vote. Okay. It's a decision that needs to be made at this point. All right. Thank you. I, I do have um, some brief comments. Uh, you know, for anybody who comes to the meetings, I do really like to defer and let other board members speak first. So I, I sincerely apologize if anyone was offended feeling that I wasn't addressing their comments or answering their questions earlier. I wanted to wait until other board members had a, an opportunity to speak before I said anything. I, I really do understand that our vote tonight, if it, if it goes the way that the motion and the second have been presented, is going to upset the people, many, many, many people in this room and, and people who were here earlier tonight who it appears have since left. But I, but I also want you to know that I have been listening all along. I listened at all the comments on August 4th, and then I listened to all the emails and the conversations that I've had since then, and then we've had several subsequent um, meetings public with comments. All these comments are publicly available on every single meeting we've had. And what's clear to me is that we don't have universal agreement about this particular decision. Now, I want to make my own personal feelings about something clear. I absolutely agree that the word raider is not inherently racist. I agree with you. I agree with you. I ag I have said it at other public meetings. I have said it at other public meetings, and I said it in emails. I agree with you. But I stand by what I've thought all along. And, and I really do understand that many of you don't agree with me. I don't happen to believe we can successfully separate the imagery. Now, I know that people in the audience believe that. I do know that. And I understand that we disagree. And it's OK that we disagree. It's OK that we disagree. And I absolutely agree with Ms. Monahan and Mr. Duff, um, Mr. Jubilee and Ms. Duffy that you know, people are going to continue to wear their Raider gear. And it is your right. And I, you will, Susan Stern, will not fault you. I will not, I will not, I will not shame you. And I do not believe that you should be. It's your, it's your right. It is. I, I, I stand with you on that. And I've, I've, you know, and I do understand that, you know, another comment I heard tonight, I, I wrote down every, pages and pages of comments because it helps me really take in the comments. There's some belief in the community that our board predetermined or preordained this name. I don't know why you believe that. I've now heard at least two or three board members say, you know what? Turns out that the kid's choice isn't their personal choice. And it's not for me either. I, had a, I would have preferred, a, if, the, if the kids would have made, there was a different name I preferred. But it didn't go my way. It did not go my way. And that's OK. I didn't serve on the committee. I, in fact, pretty much stayed away from the rebranding committee with, with a 10-foot pole intentionally. I didn't submit a name into the, into the survey. I didn't do it. I have really 
taken myself away from that process because I knew that eventually there would come the night, which we are here tonight, to vote, and that that's when ultimately my voice would be heard, which would be to vote for the new name. And I, I really do understand and respect that pretty much everybody in this audience, not everyone, but pretty much everyone, disagrees with my perspective. I respect that. I, I do. So, so I'm, I am also not going to in, engage. I understand, but this is not a back and forth. And I do understand that's, that is very frustrating for, um, for the public. And uh, there's not much more I can say about any of that. I will support the student's voice. They had their voice heard. They took a vote. I am, I, look back in meetings. I've said it for years. You take a board vote and you move on, whether, it's, whether the vote goes your way or not. That is something that I have said as a board member for years. The kids took a vote. I'm, you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna vote to support it, and we move on. And to Ms. Duffy and Mr. Jubilee's comments, and Mr. Moore and Ms. Ms. Monahan, um, I, I, I really, really, really hope that that grown-ups and adults who are disappointed in us, and I understand you are sincerely disappointed in the vote we took, in the process we took. If there's a whole host of things. I understand that and I respect that. I can only be responsible for my own personal votes, but I understand that you are I'm upset and just, I, I hope people in this community um, can find it within themselves to take a deep breath and, and, and focus on our students in the buildings and the choice that they made. That, and, 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 you know, be angry with me, that's okay. Don't, please don't take it out on students. Please don't take it out on, on, on kids. Please don't, you know, that would be, be angry with me. Be angry with me. Um, we've ha so. Um, Mrs. There, Stern? Mr. Moore, yes. I'd like to say two more things, if I may, before we call the vote. Number one, I just want to make absolutely clear, I, w I thank Mrs. Monahan, Mrs. Duffy, and Mr. Jubilee for following our procedures in coming forward with a proposal. Um, there's a lot of different ways that things uh, can happen, and, you, and you, um, you work together. You came up with a proposed solution. It was a proposed solution that was properly introduced through our board procedures, and I really thank you for that. Um, and I listened to everything you said about what every, all the reasons for it, and uh, thank you for trying. Thank you for trying, even if it didn't end up going um, the way you proposed, and I thank you for that. Um, and the other group I want to thank is, uh, you know, thinking back to my time in Radder in 1996, there was an issue that motivated a lot of students. There was um, a decision that came down from, I think, the principal that uh, wearing your school uniform in, in advance of an event would be considered elitist, and so there was actually a ban, like the football players couldn't wear their, their jerseys around, you remember Mr. Hobson, yeah, couldn't wear their jerseys around um, the, uh, around the campus on, uh, leading up to game day. And uh, there was, uh, you know, there were some, some students who wanted to show that they could have Rander pride, but, they, but it wasn't um, elitist to do that. And so they, they organized and um, you know, there was a there was a day when when all of the students were, um, you know, the football players all wore their uniforms, and the track kids wore their track jackets, and the Model UN kids wore things that said Radnor on it, and um, you know, some I think some kids had to take some detentions. They took their detentions. That's the process. You move on. You get your consequence. But eventually, the message was was sent, and the uh, uh, you know, and, and and the decision changed. And it wasn't inevitable that the decision would have changed, but that's what ended up happening. And so I want to give a thank you to um, students throughout this process who have um, advocated with professionalism and honor, and, and I thank them for that. Um, there have been students on both sides. Um, it's a big thing to stand up and say, you know, adults are making a lot of 
Uh, adults are saying a lot of things, but we as students want to have a voice too. And I, and I, for any student, whatever your position was on this, I thank you for standing up for what you believe in. Um, there were many, many examples of that. I think the, the peaceful um, walkout that we had uh, at the high school on this issue was an example of that, and there are many other examples. So thank you to, to every student who showed an adult um, the right way to advocate for what you believe in. Thank you, Dr. Babson. You wanted to say something? Sure. So I wanted to address all of you here, anyone listening. Um, this has been a long year, but I want to reassure you that we have read dozens and dozens of emails. We've heard hours upon hours of public comment. We've listened to it all. We've taken it in, we've digested it. You know, part of what I do as a professor and as a researcher, I try to put my views aside and try to understand another person's point of view. The thing is, is that I think that you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And I think that sometimes um, the debating process just has gotten pretty, you know, not very neighborly. I mean, Radnor Township is a tiny place. You know, I've lived in very large cities. I've lived in different countries around the world. Radnor Township is a small place, but I think we all like it here. Uh, some of us love it here. You know, we're choosing, all of us have chosen to raise our kids here. Okay, so how, what would it be like if we ran into each other a giant? I'm not trying to be too folksy about this, but I'm just saying, you know, we can disagree, but could we have a conversation? And could we leave the conversation like, all right, well, yeah, you're not my favorite person, and I still don't agree with you, but at least we had a conversation. Look, Kyle, I, I understand. If, if I didn't get back to you, I was looking at my emails, actually. I, I had a draft email I was going to send you, actually, in April. I should have. Okay. Yeah, Madam President. But May I raise a point of order? Yes. Uh, neither the public nor board members should engage in back and forth. Yes, Dr. Babson, fair, please. Thank fair you. Fair enough. Fair enough. But I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, resolve this a little bit here. So I feel very strongly about these issues. I've laid out all my positions in the May meeting. It's all there for you to, to check out. Um, if you want to uh, write another email to me, you want to call me, you want to whatever, you want to engage with me, that's fine. Remember, I'll just recap a couple things. Number one, I played sports for a very long time. I'm a diehard sports fan my whole life. You know, uh, I didn't sign up to be a Red Sox fan, okay? So, I mean, until recently, uh, they were not the champs that they are. But my point is, is that I understand from a cultural point of view and an emotional point of view that these issues are important. Some people have said, frankly, you know, in colorful language, these issues are nonsense or whatever. And I've, I've retorted to them, no, they're not, actually. They're very important. They're emotional issues, they're cultural issues, they're community issues. I get it, I understand. But at the same time, we, are, we were voted in to vote our conscience. And then there's another election. So if you don't like it, you're free to vote against me. And I'm sure many of you will with glee, that's fine. Uh, also, policy 006, uh, Ms. Stern said, yeah, it's not really, you know, it can be an uncomfortable policy sometimes to have this one-way dialogue. I, I totally get that, too, on a human level. Then maybe vote in someone that targets that policy for change, right? This is the process that we have. So, you know, I, I'm not going to say that we have to be buds or anything or friends, but but let's at least be good neighbors to try to about this. Um, and that's all I have to say. So thank you for coming tonight. I mean, again, uh, people that, that voice their opinions are, are my people. You know, protesters, that, that is, I, I'm very much in favor of that. I do that. Um, so that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you. Um, okay, with that, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of the recommended action that the board approve and adopt the student selection of the Raptor nickname logo for the Radnor High School and Radnor Middle School, uh, please raise your hand and say aye. aye. And the motion passes 8 to 0. Thank you, everyone.
Okay, we are going to move on to item 8.02, which is to approve changes to the RTSD health and safety plan. And the recommended action is that the board approve changes to the RTSD health and safety plan effective June 30th, 2021. Do we have a motion and a second? Motion from Ms. Goldman and a second from Ms. Dunn. Um, Mr. Dr. Batchelor, do you have any information or just want to yes. see attachments online? Yep, attachments online, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Bechtel to give a, you know, just a quick summary and overview of uh, the, the health and safety plan as we move forward. Great, thank you. All right, the, uh, the updated health and safety plan was presented at the curriculum committee meeting. This is a requirement for school districts who plan to apply for ESSER three funding. This document was reviewed by our solicitor's office. Uh, it complies with all of the requirements that Radnor Township School District ha has placed on, a, uh, placed on it by the CDC, the PA Department of Health and the Governor's Office and the Chester County Health Department. Uh, CCHD has uh, released information that uh, recently that the district has been uh, reviewing and, and this complies with, with all of those organizations. Uh, one of the key aspects of this plan is it also allows administration to respond and add layered mitigation strategies as the need arises. Um, uh, we would ask that the board uh, go ahead and we would ask that the board go ahead and approve this. Uh, this would uh, number one uh, uh, be in uh, in place for any of our summer activities, but also would allow for us to file for ESSER three funding. Excuse me, Excuse me can we ask the audience to please keep their voices down? Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Batchelor, do you have anything to add? Yes, and just as part of, so part of what's happening is our current health and safety plan, you know, has expired, and now we need to develop a plan uh, moving forward. Uh, this plan will govern us uh, as we move in, as we operate our programming this summer, and will also govern us as, as we move into the fall. Um, as we all are aware, um, the mitigation and, and even as of yesterday, the state mandates for masking um, have ended you know, for the state of Pennsylvania. This plan reflects also what we are um, you know, hearing from and learning from both the local health departments uh, monitoring the state uh, and also looking at uh, CDC and still, we still continue to meet with you know, medical advisors as we plan and monitor what goes on this summer. As with everything this year, <laughs> Um, with when it came to our health and safety plans, this is going to continue to evolve and adjust. We're going to have to monitor what happens in the next couple of weeks as well. Um, we shared with our community our intentions for the fall based on the Chester County Health Department's recommendations for what we know as of right now. So as we know of right now uh, moving forward. Um, so this will, will, will guide us as we move forward. I'm sure that as the summer evolves or as fall evolves or um, winter, we'll still have discussions and as the recommendation from the health department was, we need to be prepared to layer in mitigation if needed, uh, but we're looking to begin the year um, you know, without the mitigation, but be ready to layer it in as needed. Um, one of the pieces for the ESSER funding, uh, ESSER is the additional funding that school districts are receiving um, as part of the stimulus. Uh, is that we would like to, for just this topic alone, uh, open it up for public comment on just this topic. So um, if we could, we could open up for public comment on just this topic and the health and safety plan moving forward if there are any comments. Okay, so do we have any comments on item, uh, item 8.02, which is approved changes to the RTSD health and safety plan? That would be the only public comment to entertain at this time? Correct, Okay, yes. do we have any public comment on this? Okay, do we have any board uh, questions or comments? Okay, uh, oh yes, Ms. Dunn, go ahead, I'm sorry. I, I just, I had a question and it, it, it struck me after our curriculum committee meeting and I, there were some members of the public who have elementary age children and had reached out to me about the fact that a number of that, you know, children under 12 probably won't be vaccinated. So I just was wondering about the phrasing here. It talks about universal mask mandates. If, if there's a mandate that we, I mean, it, it may be that the Delta variant begins to be communicable, but um, much more regularly communicable among young children. If the CDC comes out and says, 
you know, under age 12 or children who aren't vaccinated, that's not in my mind universal, but is that something that this allows you or that you would still consider or is that something that then has to come back to the board? No, we would, we would allow Mr. Bechtel chip in as well, but we would, we will monitor that closely and this gives us the opportunity um, to look at those guidance and then make a decision uh, what do we need to do based on what is also happening in our community, based on what the health, our local health department is saying as well. So it would really be all those resources we'd be looking at and, and monitoring closely and then make a decision for what we need to do. Okay, okay, and then just related to that, and this is where, you know, lawyers get into the, like, really irritating and versus or, um, you know, there, unfortunately a lot of this has been very politicized, and not all the different authorities have agreed at various times. So if the governor's office either doesn't take a stance or says you don't need masks, but the CDC says you do, or the Department of Health says you do, how, how will you wait, decide wait, wait, among That those? sounds like this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I mean, and I, I, I say that, you know, jokingly, but seriously, I mean, that was the reality we have lived this year. And we've lived a year of, of competing recommendations uh, that continue to change and evolve. Uh, and I think our strength this year uh, was the time we took to understand each one of those recommendations, the time we took to understand from medical professionals on both sides of this of the issue, and the time we took to also look at what was our personal experience in Radnor. What we were experiencing played into our decisions as much as the recommendations played in and the discussions with the local health department. So uh, it's kind of a long-winded answer to, yes, that will all still play into it, um, and, and I suspect we will we could potentially see competing recommendations, unfortunately, depending on what happens. Okay, but so the way this is drafted right now, based on current guidance, because this came up also at the curriculum committee meeting, and I just think this is a bigger issue for the community if they're still watching. I if your child is enrolled in some kind of in-person activity at the district this summer, we are following current practices which do not require masking or don't require masking for people who are vaccinated, just so people understand. Sure, so, so after the vote tonight, uh, depending if this plan is approved. If this plan is approved tonight, we will move forward uh, and masking is optional. So masking will be optional for our summer programming. Um, there is uh, every student and staff member who chooses to wear a mask in our summer program should feel comfortable wearing a mask. Any student who chooses not to wear a mask should feel comfortable. Um, so that is how we're moving forward and that is how, as of right now, we'd be moving forward into the fall as well. We've been in a little bit, the, our current health and safety plan technically expires at the end of June. So we have been still masking up until today because that plan that requires it is in place. Um, so we have been masking our students uh, as part of our ESY program and other programming, summer programming. Uh, but now that the govern, now that the, excuse me, the State Department of Health on Monday, that masking order is lifted, we have this meeting tonight. Our previous health and safety plan will technically expire at the end of this month, but it gets going to be replaced by this one, which will make it optional. Mr. Bechtold, Mr. Dukavich, jump in if I did not explain something correctly. <laughs> you, you hit the nail on the head there, Ken. Great. Dr. Bashi. Uh, okay. Well, with that, do, if we don't have any, I'm going to call the vote. Oh, Dr. Babson, I'm sorry. Just, just really quickly. Sure. You know, on the one hand, I'm looking at the changed guidance from certain authorities on the other hand you know I see kids that are used to wearing masks and then I also understand the emerging science is still not s totally clear but the Delta variant does seem to be more transmissible among kids and so what that adds up to me is sort of in line with what I've been saying for a while now which is that um, let's err on the side of caution kids are used to wearing masks why would we sort of put this in the kind of civil liberties area of it's your personal choice when we're talking about public health. So that's why I'm voting against this tonight. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. And all those opposed? Okay. So the motion passes six to one with uh, Ms. Golden away from the dais. I think that was right. One, two, three. Yeah, six. Okay. Um, great, we're going to move on to item 8.03. Again, the recommended action. This is to approve the Radnor Township School District Emergency Instructional Time Plan for the 2021-2022 school year pursuant to section 520.1 of the 
public school code and authorize submission to the Pennsylvania Department of Education for approval. The recommended action is that the Board of School Directors approves the RTSD Emergency Instructional Time Template for the 2021-22 school year pursuant to Section 520.1 of the Public School Code and authorizes the superintendent or designee to submit such plan to the Pennsylvania Department of Education for approval in the form and manner prescribed by the Pennsylvania Department of Education. The template provides flexibility to meet minimum instructional time requirements in the event of an emergency that prevents a school entity from providing for the attendance of all pupils or usual hours of classes at the school entity. As occurred for the 2020-2021 school year, the Pennsylvania Department of Education, PDE, considers the World Health Organization declared coronavirus disease, COVID-19, a global pandemic, and an emergency as contemplated by Section 520.1 for the 2021-22 school year. Nothing in Section 520.1 of the school code should be construed to extend beyond the 2021-22 school year. May I have a motion and a second? A motion from Ms. Dunn and a second from Mr. Moore. All right, again, Dr. Bachelor, do you have any background you want to give us on this one? No, just that the state has, this was a provision we had, uh, we acted upon last summer uh, prior to the school year, um, knowing that uh, there still could be variants, knowing that um, not, you know, younger kids aren't vaccinated. The state has again put forward the opportunity to give districts some flexibility depending on what does happen this school year. So this vote gives us that opportunity uh, for any flexibility that may be needed during the school year. Great. So it's really not any different from what we had last year. Correct. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, okay. Again, I have, I'm, Madam President, oh, I have yes, one I'm question. sorry. So I, I, I support this. It's something we need to do um, depending on what happens down the road. Hopefully, we don't need to take advantage of the flexibility that this offers us, but we have that flexibility. Um, one question that I have heard come up now is should we have to shift to remote learning under any circumstances? What is the current administration's, oh, I'm sorry, what is the administration's current vision of uh, how much synchronous versus asynchronous time uh, would be used if we have to shift to remote learning? So, I mean, it's a, a, a big if, because right now we're planning on, on, you know, things look good right now that we're, we're planning uh, based on the health department on those discussions to, you know, be in person, um, and we were able to finish the year out, um, you know, in person. So if for some reason, though, uh, and I think the one thing we have learned this year, and we've learned that well, is that we have to be willing to change and adjust based on the information. Uh, and if we should have to adjust based on uh, health department, state, federal, some type of guidance, um, you know, we, we have realized that um, what we have learned is that the synchronous learning, when we're forced to do it, is much better than the asynchronous. Uh, we want to have our, our, our students engaged as much as possible. So we would be making those adjustments based on whatever those circumstances are. But we are, um, we feel very strongly um, and I think, you know, the silver linings of what we've learned this year uh, is that, you know, our kids need to be in school and our teachers need to be with the kids and, and the power of, of that relationship. And I think we've all, um, in, in, a, in a good way, I would even say, you know, for the bachelor children in another district who, you know, sometimes regretted pre-COVID, you know, school was looked upon one way. I think we look upon school a little differently now. And I think we have a real opportunity to capitalize on that uh, importance of that relationship moving forward and then that relationship that happens when you're present. Okay. Thank you for answering the question, and I agree with everything you said. Okay. Tell me about the next administration, Joking. <laughs> can I, can I sure, come? Sure, go ahead, Dr. Can I Bachelor. follow up? You know, the teaching and learning relationship can be mediated by any number of means. So, you know, the, let's not, I don't, I don't want to do this like hair splitting of, the teaching learning relationship that was forged online with teachers and kids was any different um, in any kind of significant or maybe lesser way. Um, I think we would all agree that in an ideal world, we'd learn face to face. Um, but we did what we had to do this year because of the pandemic. I think we should. Well, I, 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 I mean, I would take your to even go another step further. Not only did we learn, I. You know, our K-5 cyber program and our families who were involved in that K-5 cyber program uh, were 
very uh, pleased generally with the program um, our teachers the rat and our Radnor teachers who volunteered to do that um, were phenomenal and, yep. and and I think one of the things you know there was a to even say it was a night and day difference isn't even accurate what we did in the spring of 2020 in emergency learning was one thing when the, when sure. March happened but what we did with the program we ran with cyber um, and, and remote learning yes I think there we are are especially and I would say K to 12 but especially that K to 5 because that was a unique program um, that was cyber with kids um, synchronous with teachers um, online uh, it was powerful and we, and we found out there was there was many strengths to that and many families were very pleased with that programming yes thanks okay uh, so with that I'm going to call the vote all those in favor and the motion passes eight to zero. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, now the final thing is something that is on the agenda, um, I think because it didn't have an opportunity to go through the curriculum committee. But the next item is 8.04, which is approve the contract agreement with Spark Learning. The recommended action is that the administration requests that the board approve the contract agreement between Spark Learning and Radnor Township School District um, for a not to exceed amount of 15500 Ninety dollars, uh, Doctor Dukevich. I know that you are integral on this one. If you could give some background on this one, please. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Hold on. If I could have a motion and a second, let me do that first. Motion from Ms. Dunn and a second from Ms. Duffy. Thank you, Doctor Dukevich. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, as we presented in previous board curriculum meetings and also as a budget highlight uh, last Tuesday, the Department of Teaching and Learning, and in conjunction with the Department of Technology and innovation, we're excited to offer a new opportunity next year for our K-5 students in the form of a new special that will be focused on computer science and STEM. Uh, that program will uh, specifically focus on things such as computational thinking, such as programming, even at the kindergarten ev level, uh, computer skills and productivity, uh, engineering and design skills, and student disposition, such as perseverance, um, engineering and design thinking, critical thinking, things like that. Um, and so to do that, develop a new program, we'd like to partner with uh, Spark Learning, which is comprised of uh, educators who consult, do professional development, and do curriculum writing, and they will help us develop our computer science and STEM special uh, through those pieces uh, to prepare us for the start of the new year. And that's what Spark Learning is going to do for us. Great. Thank you. I don't know if we have any questions, but this is one of those exciting things that's coming from our uh, commitment in the, in the budget vote last week to in fact bring in another you know another core special for our elementary school kids which is which is an exciting development but does anybody have questions thoughts is mr jubilee there oh thank you you know the 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 the, the um yeah that's the frames um if we don't have any questions uh, thank you for explaining that i appreciate it i will say uh, all those in favor the motion passes eight to zero thank you very much dr dukevich on that one look forward to that new curriculum in the fall all right great the next item is our consent agenda so although board action is required it is generally unnecessary to hold discussion on these items with the consent of all board members they are therefore grouped and approval is given in one motion in the event a board member wants to discuss any item the board president will move it to an appropriate place on the agenda do we have anything anybody wants to pull okay with that I would entertain a motion and a second to approve items 10.01 through 15.04 and I have a motion from Ms. Goldman and a second from Mr. Jubilee, it's just Mr. Jubilee. All righty, all those in favor? And the consent agenda passes unanimously, eight to zero. And with that, I would like to say thank you. We have just approved our new five-year contract with um, Dr. Batchelor to be our superintendent, which we are excited that uh, we are going into the summer with that, with that good work. Uh, done and we've also extended our contract with Mr. Stitzel, our, our director of human uh, human resources. So it was it was good to get some some work done this summer and really uh, take a, take a break from some some of that stuff. So thank you so much, everybody. It's really great. We are very happy, very happy. All righty. And now we're going to move into committee reports. All righty. Our liaison reports. I apologize. I said committee. Uh, first up is Delaware County Community College. Ms. Solomon's not here, so we're going to defer that report. Delaware County Intermediate Unit. Ms. Goldman? Yes, um, the Delaware County Intermediate Unit Board 
board met on June 2nd for its regular business meeting and on June 9th for its committee meetings. Some of the things that occurred in the June 2nd business meeting included the appointment of um, the it was board reorganization. So Mr. Ed Cardo from Chichester will continue on as board president. Tracy Kardowski from Garnet Valley School District will be the vice president. Um, we recognize the retirement of the 35 years in tenure of Mr. Thomas Brown, who's been the chief financial and operations officer there. In addition to some of the other things that took place, there were a variety of different uh, contracts approved with DCIU to provide threat assessment training to um, different school districts within Delaware County. Um, there was an approval to enhance student learning and work experience to su and support future educators with a, um, a guaranteed admissions agreement with Newman University for Delaware County technical students who have achieved uh, have a certain academic standing. Um, in at the policy commit at the board committee meetings, there were a number of policies that there, policy work that's been done. So I think we had a first read for about eight or ten different policies. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on at the DCIU and the Delaware County Technical School, as always. In the interest of time, I won't go through all of it. Um, but uh, our next meeting, we actually are going to be having a July meeting, and that will be on July 7th. Great. Thank you so much. Next is Federal Relations Network. Dr. Baskin. Sure. No detailed report, but I would just say that getting weekly newsletters from the NSBA, I can rest assure you that, um, that what we're grappling with and managing in Radnor Township is by no means uh, unique to us, that many school districts, maybe most in the country, are, are grappling with very similar issues. Thank you very much, Dr. Babson. All right, next up is uh, Delaware County School Board's Legislative Council. Mr. Moore. Thank you. The Legislative Council met on June 9th and discussed pending legislation and the governor's budget proposal. I will defer a substantive update. You may check on the DCIU website for the legislative report that was presented in that meeting. The Legislative Council is off for the summer and expected to resume on September 8th. Thank you so much. Pennsylvania School Boards Association. Uh, I will defer any report in the interest of time. Great. Thank you. Uh, Parks and Rec. Dr. Babson? I, I was going to say what he said. but Great. Uh, no. <laughs> just a couple things, actually. So neither Ms. Dunn nor I were available for the meeting, but Parks and Rec did meet on Thursday, June 10th at Odoricio Park and then Cowan Park uh, Basketball Court to discuss the respective renovation projects. So really cool stuff happening there. Uh, the next meeting has not been scheduled, but meetings are regularly scheduled for the second Thursdays of every month at 6.30 p.m. Thank you so much. Uh, Radnor Ed Educational Foundation. Ms. Duffy? Yes. The Radnor Educational Foundation have their annual business meeting on Thursday, May 27th. They were proud to have funded almost 90,000 in grants this year, including funding for technology to support remote learning, programs that support equity and inclusion, as well as a project at the middle school that allowed students to express through visual storytelling how the pandemic impacted their lives. Um, they are also thrilled to partner with Radnor High School to present the sixth annual Mark Scalinger Educator Impact Award to special education teacher Catherine Fernon. Um, they also uh, want to make note that they congratulate seniors Janie O'Grady and Anna Granson on their graduation and thank them for their board service over the last two years and welcome new trustees Eleanor Adams and Chris Goncher, the class of 2023. Um, as always, please check out the Radnor Educational Foundation website for more information on how you can volunteer or learn to support our students. Thank you. Radnor High School Scholarship Fund, Mr. Jubilee. Sure. Um, Radnor High School Scholarship Fund met on June 14th. Um, nothing substantive report, but I think it's, um, I would love to just reiterate um, that 21 students in the class of 2021 received scholarships um, for a cumulative total of $41,250. They were recognized as part of uh, senior recognitions and graduation week and um, I think it's always nice to to share that good news yet again and look forward to um, coming back together again next school year super Radnor page Ms. Dunn uh, no report at this time okay and Radnor committee for special education um, Ms. Monahan yes the uh, Radnor committee for special ed met with uh, Jenny and George of administration on June so much.
much. All right, now we've moved on to new business. Do we have any new business tonight? Okay, seeing none. Uh, board announcements. Our next meeting will be, or our next regular business meeting will be Tuesday, August 24th, 2021, here in the Radnor Shire Room, Radnor Township's uh, Township Administration Building at 7 p.m. And now we have a public comment on new issues raised or subjects developed following the priority action discussion items. Uh, so the board will, enter, will also provide an opportunity at the end of each regular business meeting for eligible participants to comment on matters of concern. Well, th these are things that should have, yeah, that's not right. Um, official action or deli deliberation that are or may be before the board. The board requires residents once again to be, uh, requires that public participants be residents or taxpayers of the district or persons with a legal or contractual right to address the board or persons otherwise recognized by the presiding officer. Uh, we once again ask that eligible participants uh, preface your name and comments with an announcement of your name and address and that you limit your comments to not more than four minutes per board policy 006. And if you are unable to attend this meeting, oh, I guess you could email your comments to board comments at rtsd.org or in writing to Mr. Michael Petiti, Radnor Township School District 135 South Wayne Avenue, Wayne PA 19087. Do we have any additional public comments? Welcome. Hello. <clears throat> Pretty soon I'll be saying good morning instead of good evening. But hi, my name is Barbara Barnes Stefano. I reside at 217 Pine Tree Road in Radnor. And um, I'll be brief because I just kind of got here late coming back from a tournament. In a few hours I'll be driving to another golf tournament. Um, but I just wanted to say regarding the vote uh, tonight that um, I think a common theme was that many of you felt that we had to um, obviously go with the children's, the, the students vote and of course we do um, but the children or the students, sorry I'm getting a little tired um, the students didn't have um, weren't allowed to vote for the name Raider that was not provided the adults in the room limited that choice we don't know what the students would have voted for and I think actually there's many residents, alumni, et cetera, who believe that the students would have voted clearly for the Raider. Um, so I guess that's what I'd like to say in terms of the vote. So yes, the Raptor did win, but it did not have the Raider uh, to compete with. So it made it quite easy. Um, I, I recall also that there was a board member who mentioned, I think that it was um, at Amherst College, that um, that there was a vote to change the mascot and redo things similar to what we were, were doing here. And, and that is true, but uh, alumni were allowed to vote, uh, teachers, faculty, many others. So in addition to the students, the alumni could have been allowed to vote, residents of the township could have been allowed to vote, et cetera, um, besides uh, a few people on a board. Um, Let's see here. Uh, I think it's longstanding. Everyone, uh, I think you've heard it plenty that there was uh, many of us had a problem with the process and the fact that it was started during a, a national global pandemic um, and how it was handled. Um, I still do believe, and I will always believe, as a longtime Radnor Raider, I've lived in the township for 50 years. Um, I went to Radnor along with my two sisters, and uh, we've sent our kids here. And I will believe that a compromise, uh, if the board maybe wasn't so one-sided, a compromise was possible. Um, we commend Nancy for speaking up. I commend Liz and Jeff for trying to do a little mediation um, and for evolving and hearing both sides, and I do think that's important. I've done that in my own family. I have Democrats and Republicans in our family, and I think it's good that you hear both sides and you evolve. Um, so I wish maybe that it happened last summer and that more people, maybe there could have been public discussion then so that we could have all heard each other and maybe more people may have possibly changed their mind as well. So I feel like it's a shame that it was done last summer the way it, it was, and, uh, and I think it led to the outcome that it did. Um, the last thing I want to say is that with regard um, to, I know some people said we don't want to erase the Radnor history. 
um, Raider history. Uh, in Wikipedia, I noticed quickly, and I didn't read all of it, but I saw that it already was changed to Raptors. Uh, is there going to be something about the Raider history? And if there is, um, are both sides going to be able to have some input? So maybe there's something about the history. So that's just something that I'd like to suggest. Um, that's it. Thank you for all your time. I know you guys stay here late. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Fung. Is there any other public comment? Uh, first of all, I commend all, uh, Tom Doherty, 8 Lowry's Lane. I commend all of you. I have had two bathroom breaks uh, since this meeting began, and apparently <laughs> I don't think many of you have had any. So I will not delay that comfort too much longer. Uh, so tonight I thought, what would I watch? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Doctor, did you give your address? You might have identified. 8 Lowry's Lane. Thank you. Yes. So I thought tonight, what would I watch on TV? Well, the Sixers are not playing. Uh, the Phillies are barely playing. What? I don't even know. I was riveted by this meeting because originally I tuned in thinking, well, who's going to talk about the Raiders and, and, and all the rest of it? And just for the record, although it doesn't matter anymore, I am pro Raider. But then I heard something very disturbing. I heard about two incidents, uh, a video called This is America, and I have not seen it, so I cannot comment upon the contents, and a privilege test given to students, which I'll read it, but I haven't seen it. But I thought that more important than the name on the shirt is what are we putting in the students' minds. And I find it very dangerous and very disturbing that if teachers are indeed indoctrinating students in their own political views, rather than encouraging the students to develop their own strong opinions, rather than parroting the teachers, that is very dangerous. And I hope that and I hate using this word because it's horrible grammar, woke. I hate that. And things like that, I hope they do not come to Radnor. I strongly believe in students developing the skills to reach their own opinions. I'm an attorney. You can know that because I brought my legal pad. And I simply hope that if incidents like that where teachers are trying to instill their own views into students, that they will be investigated and that, if appropriate, discipline will be issued. Because, as I said, in the end, if we are poisoning students' minds or teaching them only their teachers' political views, it really does not matter what name is on their T-shirt. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Uh, is there any other public comment? Welcome, Ms. Lee. Hi. Patricia Lee, 107 Locust Grove Road, Rosemont. Unless I am mistaken, one thing I did not hear tonight was a thank you to the rebranding committee for the many hours spent on the process by the over 40 members of the committee. More than 20 members for students, eighth grade to seniors who had to juggle homework, sports, and part-time jobs to be available. No matter what side of the issue we were on, we took our role seriously and spent hours preparing our homework assignments, poring over focus group and student survey results, and readjusting our schedules, often on short notice. We took to heart the six guiding principles and voted accordingly. Sorry about that. I would like to take the opportunity to express my appreciation to the members of the committee for their dedication. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lee. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Wood. It used to be being the last word. I'll see what I can do. Um, maybe somebody will follow me. You never know. Um, I just want to thank the board members um, tonight, not necessarily for the decision you made while it's in agreement with what I would want, but that's not the, the point I, I want to make. The point I want to make is that you all made decisions individually and then came to a group decision, and it gave me a really good feeling about where we're going in the future because of the way you made the decision tonight and the conversations I heard from so many of you. It just, as a teacher in the district, it makes me feel good about our direction as a district as a whole. So I wanted to thank you for that. I think it's, uh, you know, I know that you, you guys were all in a very tough position and you have a lot of pressure coming at you. And um, 
I think you handled it well, and it's it's. Uh, um, I think it it makes a lot of sense going forward. Um, so I just wanted to say that. The other thing I I wanted to comment on um, is. As a social studies teacher, we clearly talk about politics in the classroom. And it's just the way it, it happens. Um, I think we're, to think that a, one of our high school students can be indoctrinated by a leftist teacher or a right wing teacher is not, is really far from the truth. Our students are bright, they know what's going on. They can argue back. If I start grading a student based on what they're writing that disagrees with me, that's a different story. But it's, it's something that needs to be discussed. It needs to be openly discussed. I think it, 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 it's good banter back and forth, and it's, it's good for students to hear people's perspectives, like all of you heard tonight. And this is, I think, a lot of what a classroom should look like is what you did and how you deliberated tonight. So I would hate to see that go from education because we're trying to avoid um, showing difficult things. And I know there, there's a lot of direction going there, but I, I would just hope that we would uh, be above that and understand how bright our students are and how capable they are of, of thinking on their own and being creative about how they think. And as teachers, we need to be careful in what we what we do and how far we press, how students are graded, and those sort of things, and they can't, that can't impact, um, impact what students say or how students act. So I just wanted to say that as, as I go. So have a great night. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Um, Cameron, Willow Avenue. So Azarano, right? Azarano. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, welcome. Correct. Um, I can't help but make a comment to that because if I'm correct, um, teachers are not allowed to share their personal faith in the classroom. So personal politics should not be in the classroom. And I absolutely concur that they are being spoken in the classroom because my son is in ninth grade and it was a part of his Gov and Econ class. He was in the class that was required to watch This Is America, the Childish Gambino class. So. The idea that, that CRT is not being taught in, in our school is false. It is being taught in our school. Um, that's not the comment that I was going to bring. That will come. Um, certainly lots more to talk about in days to come in that regard. In, in terms of the masks and whether or not vaccinated or unvaccinated or this age or that age will be required to wear masks, I am pretty staunch in my belief right now that if there is any sort of a mandate of a mask for my son, regardless of his status, there will be a discrimination lawsuit um, that will come because it is absolutely unlawful and you cannot discriminate based on a medical condition. So just also wanted to put that out there. Um, I guess it's kind of interesting to, to consider that there was deliberation that went on here tonight because I don't think it's the case. You're a 9 board. It's a 9-0 board, you're all Democrats, so it's not really a surprise that we're here today and the vote was the vote. So I'm not upset about the actual vote. I'm upset about the process. I'm upset that this community didn't have the opportunity to come together. I will tell you, I stand before you today, I may have supported the Raptor if we had had the opportunity to have those tough conversations, but you took that away from us in September. So we didn't have that opportunity as a community. So, so just know I have not, nothing personal to say about you all because I don't know you. So my fire and my feist comes from a place of questions that were never answered. Kyle Addis asked, why did the Raptor name get back on the ballot? It's not answered. I don't think anybody has given him a concrete answer. And in lieu of what Patty Lee just shared, it's really, it's really disappointing that those committee members didn't really get the honor and integrity of answers that they deserved. So um, I, I do appreciate the time that you put into this, but it, it, it does seem to me that there was something preconceived for you to have felt that it was in the best interest of this community to make such a significant decision for us in the period of a month. 
So why I wanted to rebut the, the young lady's comments, and I completely respect her for her very strong opinion. I happen to wear a Native American ring on my finger almost every day of the year. And why did I do, do that? Because of my choice and my way of respecting and honoring a community of people that I cherish and value as an American. And so if that's racist for her, well, I can't change her mind about that. But what was so clear to me is that we were being told it was an open and transparent process. And all along, I've been saying, but the vote was cast. You cast the vote and denied this community the opportunity to have the tough conversations. And you didn't trust us to be able to come together and maybe say, you know what? Maybe it really is time to let the Raider go. So now you're asking us to unify ourselves. That's not our job to do now. You're the ones that fragmented us to start. So, you know, I, I'm here and I'm supportive and, and I... Four minutes has elapsed. Yeah, anyway, I work to, to be courteous and respectful, but just please know that you put us in a tough spot. Thank you, Ms. Cesarano. Welcome. Uh, thank you. My name is Cassandra Kennedy. We don't have to give our number, right? We can just give our street? Yes. Okay, so Eagle Road, Wayne. Sorry, I just came from the Phillies game. I have nothing prepared. I did submit something earlier. However, for a teacher... Oh, you I'm come at was read before? Yes, but okay. I'm... This is completely opposite. For a teacher to come up here and state that they put their political opinions in class is wrong and I'm an independent I'm not one side or the other at all it's wrong you should never know your teachers political beliefs I can't recall Mr. Clevenger like Miss Peterson any of my teachers political beliefs growing up at all none of them it's not okay it's not okay and you should not be giving out this privilege test. I'll tell you this, I grew up in a single wide mobile home. I worked my way through college. I got a college, like I got a degree, woo, can't tell right now because I'm so nervous, but got a degree, got a great job, worked really hard. But for people to like push their opinions, call people racist up here, tell people you're an oppressor, because that's what's going on, obviously, in his class, is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. And I'm telling you, if my kid gets that test or whatever in her class next year, I'm not going to be happy. I won't be happy at all. And then for the parliamentary thing, the Fourth Amendment was absolutely wrong. It does not say spy on me. I'd rather be safe. So your teachers are teaching incorrect information there. I'm just, I'm so upset about this right now. I'm so sorry, I'm all over the place. For the masking thing, it's not even FDA approved for anyone below, what, 12? So if you guys do require masks for the kids under that age, I'm gonna have to have my kid at home. And he's not happy at home. He's so upset when he's at home. So I just, I'm sorry I'm all over the place. But for this teacher to come in here and say, that they go back and forth, they know it's political beliefs, that's not okay. It's not okay at all. You should never know your teacher's political beliefs. They're not teaching if you do. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Ms. Stern, point of order before we get another question. Oh, My question sorry. is, excuse I, me. I feel like some of the comments have... I, I, excuse me, if we can just, yes. Point of order, Ms. Stern. My question is, it sounds like some of the commentary is actually conversation among the public and not relating to matters that the board discussed this evening. And I guess my question is whether that's the proper use of public comment at midnight, the or if it's in compliance is, with our the policy. The second public comment does not have to be related to items on the agenda. So, so um, we're going to proceed with public comment. But to answer your question, Ms. Dunn, the second public comment is uh, is for basically any concern. It doesn't have to be related to the agenda specifically. Okay, it just it isn't about anything that the board has discussed. It's about, it's it's kind of conversation among members of the public. I, so that's the, fine. The, this is public comment. Uh, Ms. Um, Walsh, welcome. 
Hi, my name is um, Annika Walsh Van Rossum. It's changed the last couple of years, um, and I am on South Roberts Road. Um, I don't want to have a conversation with people that said incorrect things and mischaracterized what my bonus dad said. And just so you all know, as someone who has graduated from Radnor and has many of my alumni from my class who I've spoken to, uh, actually are very thankful for having him as a teacher and said he's one of the few classes that they felt heard and appreciated and that they could have real honest conversation in. Um, so I'm just going to make that very clear. And uh, also, thank you. Uh, again, not for choosing what I wanted, but listening to your students. Because again, that is what's really important, is that the students are the ones that have to go to the school every day. Students are the ones that have to walk the halls. Students are the ones that will have to wear the apparel or will be surrounded by the apparel. So I really thank you for creating an environment that they chose to be in and that they support and that they can feel supported by. And I think it's really meaningful that they feel like this board heard them. And everyone's had an opportunity to speak, and that's great and it's wonderful, but the students have been heard. And I just want to say I appreciate you for supporting them because that's what it's about. Um, and just to touch really quick on the Childish Gambino video, um, that barely scratches the surface of what critical race theory or the issues in this country surrounding race are. So if that's too much, then there's a whole other conversation that needs to be had. Um, and also, you know, I didn't call anyone racist. Again, if you think that that touches to you. And that's another great issue. We can talk about cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation. And that's wonderful things that you can talk about when you talk about the real history of the United States. So I don't have anything prepared on that. I would love to come up with a real comment that has substantive um, input, because as someone who is in law school and is learning a lot about the history that was not taught because of just the way history has been taught through many school districts, I don't want to ramble about something that doesn't make sense. But oh my gosh, what a great opportunity for Radnor students. As someone who's left Radnor and has now become part of a great group of BIPOC students, uh, LGBTQ students, I feel so enlightened by sitting with them and hearing all these wonderful issues and hearing about the history of the US. And as far as privilege, what a great thing to have, privilege. Because with privilege, you are able to uplift other groups that do not have the space and be an ally and support them and give them voice where they have been denied voice for generation after generation after generation. So I just think that it's being characterized in a negative, And I think there's a lot for everyone to look into. And I'm not saying it's a check off. But I think when we look at all the positives, talking about if you don't want to call it critical race theory, if you just want to talk, call it history or whatever you prefer. Um, but how uplifting for the students to be able to engage with the entire world rather than just the small bubble of the town. It is a small town. And there are so many amazing people and events for them to meet and partake in. And I really hope that that opportunity is afforded to our students. And it's not politics. It's reality. It's facts. It's what happened in this nation. And the students will grow from that. And I really support Radnor students' growth. So again, I thank you for listening to everybody. I thank you for hearing all sides. And I thank you for continuing to support an inclusive and supportive environment for Radnor students like you did when I was there, and as you have continued to do for my brother and hopefully future students to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Walsh.
makes no sense to force Rapture down our throat when minimum half the community does not want Rapture. You, I know, Miss uh, Duffy, you talked about 60-something percent. In statistics, that's not a good number. There was a lot of students that did not vote towards the end. And if we want to talk about the student vote and what they wanted, Raptor should have never even been on that list. Raptor was voted off. So I'm really upset with the way it went. Of course, uh, you know, while we always can't win, hopefully in November we can change things. But it's not about winning or losing. It's about what has been done to this community. It's wha what has been done to these students. And I reiterate what Patty said. I put in hours, hours of research, my time on that rebranding committee. I'm a single mom, I work two jobs, and nobody has ever reached out to me to thank me for my time, much less everybody, these students that were on that committee. We did not set a good example for those students that were on that committee. Y'all should all be ashamed of yourselves. They put in their time as well, and we, they were not heard. So when you talk about students, it is a one-sided voice that's being heard. Not both sides are being heard. So I'm really upset with the way it has come out. And I wish y'all would have just voted no to be Radner because that's what we truly are is Radner. Secondly, with regards to the cost, I would like for y'all to discuss in great detail with regards to the cost. We talk about it being free. When we discussed it in the rebranding committee, what it is, you get one logo that is free. If we have two logos that are presented, we have to pay extra for that logo. We're only allowed one free logo. And if you go further on to the information with regards to the cost, there are consequences, or there's, I um, can't think of the word off the top of my head. Um, you, or we, I guess as Radnor Township, have to have contracts with other rebranding companies. We are tied into certain contracts for the next five years. This is not being discussed. This is not being provided to the public, only probably in snippets where it's hidden through the, the website. I would really truly like for the cost and what is broken down with the rebranding, because it is not free. There are hitches to it being free. And let's not forget there was a six month deadline. Hence, Four minutes has elapsed. The rush to get the vote. Because if we didn't have the vote in the process within the six months, the free and the $15,000 uh, budget would go away that was given to us. So I, everything has just been inappropriate, and it, it is truly corrupt, Ms. Stern. Thank you, Ms. Castilla. Sorry. Um, is there any more public comment? Katie Wittoff, the E53 Milmar Road. Um, I'm going to Welcome. Say what Amanda said. Um, you know, I know that a lot of students, you know, heard about how how the um, branding committee was facilitated, and know that the Raptor was not original. That was voted off twice, and they just felt like, why bother? You know, they felt like, why bother? Because it doesn't matter what we choose. I also heard kids. Some of them were in this room. Some of them, you know, took us, won the lacrosse games, boys and girls that have been to my house, all said the same thing. Um, it's, just, it's just really disappointing, and, and it, it is more about the process. Um, I agree that the students should have a choice. I just feel that the way it happened, they weren't given the right opportunity to do so. Um, and again, I obviously was not on the rebranding committee. My daughter was. Um, and every time she, you know, came upstairs, she just looked um, <laughs> like just, I don't know, like a, like a wilted flower. Um, and again, she's always had integrity. She always listens to others. She's been very respectful. Um, but to hear her say that she's disappointed in the leadership of Radnor, um, you know, in her senior year when she shouldn't have been, been on a rebranding committee, she should have been doing a lot of other things, and she was. It's not like they didn't have the opportunity to do fun things. It's just, um, it's very disappointing. I hope going forward that all of you really think about the decisions you make and how you make them. I don't think any of you ever inter intend to hurt our children, but I can honestly say that um, you have. So going forward, I hope that um, that you think you, you think things through better. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Widow. Is there any other 
of public comment. Okay, I will entertain a motion and a second to adjourn. Ms. Stern, sorry, I have a couple. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a couple. Three. Email comments? Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Petey. Sure. Can't see. What's the rush? I can't see because of the piece yeah, of wood I, here. I was, I was kidding. Mr. Petiti, please go ahead. It's fine. Um, Kelly Martin, 771 Conestoga Road. If a student produces a video to public television to influence the community on an issue, they have opened their opinions up to feedback. This is not bullying. Laurie Barnes, 100 Woods Lane. Hello, I am Laurie Barnes, and I live at 100 Woods Lane in Radnor. I do not approve of the Raptor name. This was an underhanded attempt by the board, and is not supported by your constituents' taxpayers. Students should have been given more time to vote as well. 67% voting is pathetic. The, Radnor, the Raider name wasn't even allowed on the ballot. The rich history of our school has been ruined by the board. Thank you. Um, Catherine Muzino. 1987 graduate, 46 Berkeley Road, Devon. One last comment over the Raider name. I've seen this topic covered in NBC local news and CBS local news and always wondered why ABC didn't cover it until I found out the connection. Another example of the behind the scenes sneaky quiet tactics used by the school board. Disgraceful. That is all. Thank you very much. Uh, I would entertain a motion and a second to adjourn. Motion from Ms. Dunn, a second from Dr. Babson. All those in favor? And the motion to adjourn passes unanimously. Good night, everyone.